All right, here we go. My favorite regular guest on Vlad TV, Boosie Badass. What's up? Welcome back. Always a pleasure and an honor right. whenever you come, man. We're out here in LA right now. Right. right. You know, you see the drum set in the back. We right. usually do it at your house. Yeah. But this time we're actually doing it, <laughs> you know, in my backyard. Yeah. In person. Yeah. Something we don't always get to do, but we've done a few times. Right. You looking good? You looking healthy? Yeah, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm working. I'm out here in LA grinding right now, just working. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at your Instagram. Yeah. It's like, yo, we're doing features. Yeah. We're doing promo. Right. We're doing sponsorships. Right. Whatever you need. Right. The number one hustler in yeah. hip hop. Yeah. 10 years strong. Yeah. All right, man. Let's get into it. I mean, we can't really start this interview out right now without talking about Jada Pinkett and Will yeah. Smith. So you said on your Instagram, a Louisiana dude will fuck your house up. <laughs> we not going to spare your bitch. <laughs> I salute you. I was in love with Jada Pinkett as a kid, too. I would have done the same. What y'all think he's saying in his head with that look? If we divorce, we're going to go air your ass out with dirty laundry. He ain't the only one you fucked, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you heard about that, because you know I've been hearing about the Jada August uh, Elsina. So when I saw that picture, I was like, I gotta, I gotta be comical. <laughs> oh, with, uh, with, with Will Smith, all yeah, like teary eyed, bro. Like that picture killed me. But you gotta understand, Jada, Jada Pinkett, she was she was zoomed. Louisiana, we zoom bitches. It's like it's it's an attraction. You heard me? It's an attraction. <laughs> you know our accent. See, she got caught up. August Alcina to, hey baby, come here. <laughs> you so motherfucking beautiful. He grabbed. He bought. He bought to bring your fucking ass here. You beautiful motherfucker, and grabbed and kissed her, and fucked up. You my little yeah yeah. Bitch, you my little yeah. She bought. Ain't never had a nigga call her. Bitch, you my little yeah. I'm loving you. You know she bought. Ain't never. She bought. Got zoomed. Zoom. You know, we some attractive niggas. We got a good accent. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's how it happened, man. She, I think she got Zoom. Yeah. You know, Louisiana, we Zoom, bitches. We, you know. You don't think, though, it kind of happened the other way around? You got this dude who's going through serious health problems. I don't know right. if you heard about Excuse that. No. And, like, I think. Uh, that shit don't be about health problems. He, shit, he was taking you, care of his. Dick is what your dick do. <laughs> It's what your dick and your pussy do. It don't be about no health problems. All that shit be excuse. I did the same thing. I don't work with that bitch because she'll take care of me diabetes. No, that, that be bullshit. It's how your dick and your body act, react when they come around. It's not about uh your, your, all that pussy. Well, that's how in my life, uh, you know. So I don't I don't think so. I think it's about you being attracted to someone. When you're attracted to someone and you let someone be that attraction around your wife, he's going to fuck her. They're going to fuck. You know, we never know what was going on in there. We don't know. We know now. If everybody in the house, you <laughs> think you know. <laughs> but I've heard for a long time that Will and Jada have an open marriage. And let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is. I'll tell you off camera. I have heard from a reliable source some real wild shit about how Will and Jada get down behind closed doors. L let me tell you. I'm not going to say because I'm going to get sued for defamation. But I'll tell you off camera. This is the tip, the very, very small tip of the iceberg right here. So it doesn't really surprise me, but the fact that he went and had the interview with Angela Yee and just let it all loose, that's what kind of surprised me. Yeah, I, I, some things best left kept quiet. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt. You know, so when it came out, you know, I, it, was, it was funny as fuck to me. Uh, you know, even though that, that's a relationship, and if it is an open relationship, that shouldn't that shouldn't even be explained. Right. None of this should have been explained if it was an open relationship between the two. You know, and, and it should have been it should have been a simple Instagram Instagram post. That's what we do. Yeah. You know, that, Case it, closed. It, it, and, and, and and none of this would have happened. But when you take it to other places, that's when it get like that. But I think if they do, if they do have an open relationship, they should have just said, that's what we do. Sometimes he have bitches on this side. I have niggas on this side. You know, it's an open relationship. However, that's how they should have did it, if it's that way. Well, I heard it was that way. Or it is. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, they can kill all that and say, 
no, they can't do that. Then they're going to say they put on for the camera. So I don't know. I mean, I'm surprised they did that whole red table talk because Will's looking kind of bad right Man, now. bro, why did he do that? Will, Will's bro? looking bad. Why did he do that, bro? And it looked like she just got the power. Exactly. You know, we entangled. <laughs> entangled. She cocking now. <laughs> the little motherfucker cocking six eight. She cocking now. We entangled. Yo, let me tell you. Well, I was in a bad spot. <laughs> he made me feel good. He made me. I, I was. I didn't think he made you feel good if his health bad. You better wake up. You better wake up. Yeah, my help, bro. How the fuck he made you feel good and he fucking help. I ain't help. <laughs> Jeez. Yo, I saw an Instagram post that said E N T A N G L E M E N T. Do you know what that means, man? <laughs> I was gonna post something on my Instagram. Like he he didn't turn my DM up. We are like all like girls who trying to get at me. They like, can we entangle? <laughs> like every like, can I get some entanglement? Like that shit is crazy. I think that's gonna be like a new. A new theme, like we just entangled, man. Like they're gonna be a way to get people out of shit. <laughs> just forgive us. We're like Jay. We just entangled. We're just entangled. We're like Jay, the pink and wheel. We need to be together. It's just an entanglement. It's just an entanglement. <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, I guess the one thing that really, as a man, just made me kind of shake my head was when he said, "I got permission from Will." Bro, that hey, bro, that 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 made me think. Open. Like when he got permit, like you know if somebody's staying in your house, I mean, you know I know you got a big ass house, but you know you know if somebody you smell a nigga cologne. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. You know if a nigga staying in your house. Come on, man. I I I don't like the you know, but it sounds like he gave him approval, man. It sounds like he okay if y'all gonna fuck around, fuck her, <laughs> fuck her brains out. You know what I'm saying? Just. <laughs> You know. Right. You know what a cuckold is? What is that? Cuckold is basically a dude that watches his girl mess with other dudes. They got like pornos like this and shit like that. Oh, not okay. not my thing, but I've heard the term before. Yeah. Cuckold. Yeah. C-U-C-K-O-L-D. And that's kind of how Will Smith looking right now. Yeah, that's how it's looking to me. Like, like he, like, August Alstina did nothing wrong, you know. Doing he went him. in that air, baby. <laughs> yeah, how you doing, love? You know, we are respectable. We we real respectable down there. Real respectable. You know, nice, got up, danced with her. You know, got in her element. You know what I'm saying? Once you look in the woman's eyes, she know whether you want to fuck her or not. Once a woman look in your eyes, you know whether she want to fuck you or not. Mm -hmm. So all this little game shit everybody be talking about, it's not, it, that's not reality. Well, Jada Pinkett, Let's take a look at her age real quick. I wouldn't give a damn. I would love to entangle with her. Well, Jada Pinkett is 48 years old. August Alcina is 27. If you take away the whole underage thing of R. Kelly, what's really the difference between what Jada did and what R. Kelly did to of age girls? He goes and takes girls that are a lot younger than him, who are vulnerable, who he, you know, he comforts, does his thing with. Nah, it's, it's kind of it, what Jada it, it, did. Nah, it's, it's kind of what Jada did. I can't say that. It's, it, it's I'm not, gonna say it. It's because you know, 27 year old, you're a grown man. Well, he's 27 now. Back then, he was about what 24 or something. 24, you still a grown man. You know, one, we can't we can't compare kids to grown grown women. Even though I love the shit out of our kids. And by the way, nobody can go in a versus battle with R. Kelly in the world, <laughs> living or dead. Y'all lucky he in trouble, motherfucker. Who, who, wait, hold, hold on. That's a good nobody. Point. Who you gonna call? Michael Jackson? No. Beyonce? Beyonce? No. Nobody got more hits than R. Kelly. Nobody. I'll wait. Stevie Wonder's still alive. He can't fuck with no R. Kelly. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder can't fuck with no Stevie R. Kelly. Stevie Wonder. Let's keep it real, man. Nobody can fuck with R. Kelly when it come to hits. Nobody can battle him. Nobody. I don't give a damn what he did, who he fucked. I know he fucked up, but when it come to talent, we cannot take this away from R. Kelly. Because you don't take it away from Michael Jackson. So we ain't going to take it away from R. Kelly. Stevie don't Wonder. Don't start me now. Stevie Wonder. Hell no. Stevie Wonder. R. Kelly got more hits than a mother. R. R. Kelly, the truth. 
Do you want me to start? And he didn't wrote. And he didn't wrote more hits too. He wrote a lot of hits. I give you that. Yeah, and sung them. Yeah, man. R. Kelly. R. Kelly started a generation. Niggas wouldn't even pussy till R. Kelly came out. He started this shit. He started us fucking like us fucking. Yeah, niggas wouldn't even pussy. No. To R. Kelly. Keith Sweat was begging. Yeah. I love Keith Sweat, mm -hmm. but he was begging. Yeah. You heard me? Everybody else, they, they wasn't talking about that. I, I was in the streets, you know, as a child at that time. Right, but you're-, you're... R. Kelly made it cool to freak. Right, I And got he that. made the hits on top. You can't take it away. Gospel hits, country hits. Hey, don't make me start now. He just fucked up right now. He can't, he can't defend himself. That's a bad motherfucker. You can't fuck with R. I don't give a damn who he is. Stevie Wonder, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna hold on to this. Stevie Wonder is bad as hell, and he's still alive. People just forget because here's the thing: you and I are a little bit too young to really appreciate Stevie Wonder in his prime. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Stevie Wonder was popping in the '70s. I know, probably. Okay, that's probably could. I don't know, but I don't know six, seven Stevie Wonder song. Really? Isn't she lovely? I know. I, oh, never, I know. Is he? But how many of you know of R. Kelly? I just called to say I love you. Lord, I just called to say I love you. I don't even know that. You don't know? I don't know that. Come come on, come on with uh, Stevie. Stevie Wonder's biggest hits. All right, hold on, hold on. You talking about kills. Higher Ground, Part-Time Lover, Ebony and Ivory. No? Ebony and I have never heard it. You've never heard Ebony and I? Part-time love? I ain't hear, I, ain't, I, I never. You're, you're, you're too young. That's the problem. Probably. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Stevie Wonder is considered one of the greatest of all time, right. period. Yeah, he can't fuck with our kids. And he was blind on top of that. Well, he let's keep, let's keep that in mind. Okay. Agree to I disagree. I will agree to disagree. Steve, Steve Wonder, you can bring Michael Jackson from the grave. I don't give a damn who you bring. Well, you, you would put R. Kelly over Michael Jackson? Yes. By far. Cut it out. By far. No. No. By far. By far. And the people who like me would too. Who who grew up like me, you know, all, everybody grew up in different situations. You put R. Kelly over Prince. Yes. I only know Purple Rain. Fuck. What else I know? <laughs> I know Purple Rain. I love it. Little Red Corvette. Little Red Corvette, yeah. 1999. No, no. When I, when doves cry. When doves when doves cry. Yes, that yes. one. <laughs> Kiss. Kiss. Oh. That yes. One. Okay. That's a lot of hits I'm naming for you right now. That is not a lot compared to motherfucking R. Kelly. <laughs> huh. That is not compared to R. Kelly. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got I got I, I gotta speak for him. I might get took dragged about it, but you're gonna get dragged to school. I know, but he's a, it's he, a generation thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a generation. R. Kelly See, is the greatest to me. I'm old enough to remember when Thriller came out, and it was the biggest thing ever. Period. Point blank. Right. Beat it. Uh, thriller. Yeah, I was PYT. Just born it. I was just born. Billy Jean. Yeah. Like you, you, you have to. It's one thing to go back and, and discover a, an artist catalog. Like you know, I'm I'm too young for Marvin yeah, Gaye. I love Michael Jackson. Like Michael Jackson is a motherfucker, but R. Kelly is just. He's just. Well, he's your generation. Yeah, he's. He's your generation, is Michael Jackson. Right. That's all that is. Right. I guess so every generation got- Every one generation got, got someone. Yeah, right. Well, what do you think about the verses that's happening these days? You know, right now, the whole TI-50 thing is kind of <laughs> doing its thing. Uh, I don't know. I think people just bored and want to do shit. Like, yeah. This corona got people just, everybody's just, this corona, I, I hate 2020. Yeah. I hated this year from from the start of it. 2020's trash. It started off with, with Kobe shit. dying, and it just got worse after that. This ain't shit, bro. Yeah. It's the worst year of our lifetime, I think. I mean, what do you think of uh, T.I. versus 50? Who do you think would win that? Uh, <clears throat> I would have to go with Tip, you know, because I'm, like y'all say, look where I'm from. The South. You know, I'm from the South. You know, uh, but you so don't remember when uh it. you don't remember when Get Rich or Die Trying came yes, out? Yes, I remember. I know every damn song from Get Rich or Die Trying. See, that but, album alone, I don't think that T.I. dropped an album of that caliber. Now, he, he has an incredible catalog. I, I'll give it to T.I. The catalog, I think T.I.'s catalog is better than 50s. I'll give you that. Yeah, what we going on? Albums? Uh, 
and that, that's the tough part. Oh, I, I see. What, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It's, it's a tough thing, but that first fifty out. My barber was just saying that you know, like they grew up. He from Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, they grew up on the get rich. You know, they grew up on yeah of uh, fifty, and we grew up on listening to Tip. Right. So uh, you know, it'll be. I, I, I like to see it. You know, I, I like to see it, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I I had to go with Tip. You know, Fifty, my nigga. But I know way more Tip records being from yeah where I'm from. What do you think about the whole Crime Stoppers thing that's that's popping up again? Hey, what's happening, y'all? Some people call me Tip, but this is about another kind of Tip that can help our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, and our fathers help get the perpetrators who commit crimes against them off the streets. All you got to do is call Crime Stoppers Atlanta. Tips can be anonymous, and there's even a reward. The number of the Crime Stoppers Atlanta is 404-577-8477. That's 404-577-TIL. Channel 2, community coverage you can count on. Uh, I think he should have never did it. But uh, one day I went and listened to it. And, you know, it, it don't seem like he ratting on that much. It seemed like he doing a drop. He's you doing a drop. Saying? It's like he doing a drop. You know what I'm saying, but it's certain things you don't do when you, when 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 you rapping about gangster shit. You know what I'm saying. So I think that was a mistake on his part. You know what I'm saying. But like they were saying, he did that to get out of trouble or whatever. I yeah. feel like it still was a mistake on his part doing it. But me listening to it, it seemed like he's doing a drop. But regardless, you don't do that once you tied. Yeah, tied he had a, in a, he had a Fed case. He had a Fed case. He was on Fat Joe's uh, IG live, and he actually was describing it and they were saying that when he got caught you know with all the guns they basically were like well you gotta tell on some people like i'm not gonna tell on anybody like okay well well then you gotta do this and you know that's basically what he agreed to do in order to stay you know to get us a, a short sentence and i understand why he did it you know my man my son spoke about this at one point he was like well he's offering a reward at the end for for telling on people, that's in that Crime Stoppers thing. He said, "Yeah, and if you tell, you get a reward." So I know that's something he didn't want to do. Shouldn't even took his fucking ass up there. Why the fuck you? You already in trouble. You already in motherfucking trouble. Like you know, like he shouldn't have took his ass up there and said shit. Yeah, you know. So you would have done more prison time to avoid doing that commercial. I'm not working. With, they know I'm not gonna work with them. So it, it, <laughs> no deal. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 they ain't gonna come up to me with no shit like that. They I ain't they ain't gonna break no deals to me like that. Mm. They never know what I might say on the camera. So you know, I was, <laughs> yeah. I guess originally they wanted him to stand in front of a bunch of cops, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing all that." Oh, okay. They was trying to really yeah make they, an example out of him. They like, was trying oh, okay, to really you, shit you, on you're him. You're the gangster make, rapper, huh? We're gonna make you the rapper. We finna make you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see what they did. Do the song and dance. I for see us. what they did. And they kind of played on his top. Of course. Yeah, they played on this top. Okay, well, this would carry with you for the rest of your life. Yep. For you just getting out this little trouble. Yep. Yeah. See, the Fed play a cold game. Bro. Oh, yeah. 95% conviction rate. Yeah, the Fed play a cold game. I would have laid my ass down. Your case was a Fed case or a state case? I was a state case. Oh, so you, you got lucky. Yeah. 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 The Fed, they pay to convict your ass. Yeah. Yeah, ain't no winning. Well, uh, you know, we've talked about Michael Jordan a bunch of times during our interviews. And just recently, we started releasing the interview with uh, Daniel Green, who was one of the two guys convicted of killing Michael Jordan's father. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah. Did you watch it or listen to it? Nah, I just swooped through it. Let me tell you, this is one of the stupidest stories I've ever heard in life. Two guys killed Jordan's father. The guy I interviewed said he didn't kill him, but he helped get rid of the body, right? He said his man killed him, and then since that's his man, they went out there you know, to the red Lexus where the body was, and he helped get rid of the body because that was his friend. He was trying to help him out. Now, let me tell you what happened after they got rid of the body. They drove around. So why they killed him? Why, why they killed? Him? The story is kind of the story. The story is kind of fuzzy, you know, because there was only two witnesses there, 
And obviously the the guy I talked to said he didn't kill him. The other dude killed him. He just went out there and helped get rid of the body. The other dude was saying that they were both together and Daniel Green was the one who was the trigger man, right? So we don't really know that part. But we do know that he got killed and we're not quite sure why. I don't know. It sounded like a robbery gone bad. But after they went and got rid of the body, these dudes drove around in the red Lexus for a week, made 40 phone calls from the car phone to their friends and family. And to really put the cherry on top, the dude that I interviewed made a music video at his house wearing Jordan's father's jewelry, the championship ring, the watch, and rapping about, I'll put two in your head. And they found the video. And they out of jail? No, he's doing life. Oh, okay. He's in prison. The other dude, I think he took a plea deal and they're saying that he might get out on bail. So he just killed him for well, nothing. Not bail. Uh, parole. Parole, yeah. So he just killed him for nothing. For nothing. Couple of trinkets. Just Couple to ride of, in his car? Pretty much. Couple of broke dudes living in the trailer homes in North Carolina. Sucker ass nigga. They gotta get their ass jugged in that bitch. After the last dance came out, they put him in cell number 23. Why they did that? What's Jordan's number? The guard should have whooped his ass 23 nights. <laughs> that what the guard should have did. Whooped his ass 23 nights, you stupid trailer park motherfucker. Yeah, it was a black dude and a white dude. Yeah, I, I interviewed the, the, the black dude. 23 nights. Yeah, man. I mean, they're 18 years old. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. It just shows how one stupid decision could fuck up so many different lives. They fucked up their own lives. They fucked up Jordan's life. They fucked up Jordan's family's life. Everything. It was just a, it was just a train wreck all around. Um, you know, apparently uh, Jordan's father was, you know, driving North Carolina and just went off to the side of the road to take a nap because he was tired. And where he was doing it, it was kind of like by this, like, you know, like one of those like kind of trap motels where they just, you know, where they're hoeing and stuff like that. And I think they just saw an easy lick. And they just it turned into a murder. It's fucked up. What do you think about Kanye running for president? Kanye. Kanye running for president. Kanye fucking crazy. Actually, I think Kanye, you know, I think Kanye infatuated with, with fame. You know, when I look at Kanye, I think, you know, why would, you know, I don't, I, I just I just don't believe it. You know, I just feel like, you know, everything is it's not it's not right with those people sometimes. You know, uh you know, I'm a fan of Kanye's hustle, you know, I'm a fan of Kardashian's hustle. But uh I just feel like a lot of times Kanye be reaching, you know. Uh, I just, uh, you know, like if you're gonna be one way, you stay one way. You know, that's how I am. I'm real all the way through. You know, I ain't, I, you know, you were saying George Bush don't like people, but you gonna go right up there and say, you don't, you, Trump don't like black people? You gonna say, you gonna say George Bush don't like black people when your career blowing off. Then you gonna go back and, and you don't say nothing to Trump and tell him he don't like black people? Yeah, cause Trump really don't And you don't gonna like put a hat on yeah. and, and be with him in front of him? It feels like he's doing that shit for gang, you know? Right. Did you see that video? At, at certain times in life. Did you see that video that Trump put out and had that old dude saying white power? Nah, I ain't oh, see it. Oh, you didn't see that? You know, I ain't see it. He put up a video of these old dudes arguing with each other. Like Trump tweeted this. And one of the dudes goes, white power. Yeah, you know, you, you know, Trump hates black people. Like, you know, yeah, it, it's a fact. And if a black person vote for him, like, I, I, I can't look at you the same, you know? When this first started going off, all across the world with these fires and things like that. He called them people thugs. Mm -hmm. He didn't say no other. So thugs in most Caucasians mind, they are labeled black people. Right. So you figure in your heart, that means you was raised like this as a child to hate blacks. Mm -hmm. You feel anybody does something wrong in the world is a black person. You feel he's a thug. So, you know, people who vote for Trump, you know, you got to, you know, you you saying fuck your ancestors, everybody. You know, I don't, 
I don't comment on it, but I, you know, he doesn't like our race, you know. No, I think all, uh, you know? I think Trump realizes that his core, you know, voter base is racist white people. Right. As long as he keeps them happy, they're the ones going to go and vote for him. They're going to get all their friends because you, what you have to admit is that Trump supporters are way more gung ho than Biden supporters, Obama supporters, Bush supporters, whoever. They're like, yo, we're going to vote for him. We're getting all our friends. We're all going to get in our pickup truck. <laughs> we can go to the polls. We're going to have our dog vote, our underage kids vote. We're, <laughs> we're going to do whatever it takes to get him in. You know, that's why Hillary Clinton lost last time because people didn't like Trump, but they weren't really excited about Hillary. So yeah. they didn't really go out and vote. Yeah. But can you vote legally? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, as a as a convicted felon, did you lose your right to vote or no? I probably did. Yeah. Okay. I know in Florida, they're allowing felons to vote. I'm in Georgia. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah, not sure. I don't know if I could vote. Let's look it up. Yep. You cannot vote. The right to vote, uh, convicted felons' right to vote. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I believe so. I believe you lose your right to vote. I lose my right to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, here we go. In Georgia, getting your voting rights back after serving time is a confusing process. Okay, so there, there's a little more to it. There are certain, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it a little bit more. Uh, Georgia makes it possible for felons to re-register to vote after they've completed the terms of their sentence and parole or probation, as long as they have paid the associated legal fees and fines as well. They can make an application to vote. So you you could do it, but you got to go through a process. Okay. You've never voted? No. Any uh, any plans to? Uh, <laughs> I haven't had none. I ain't gonna lie. I, ain't, I, you know. I mean, you do know what what your your ancestors went through in order to get a right to vote. Right. 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 You know, I just watched. Uh, we that. do need to vote. You know. Uh, that's a big thing we need to vote because we need to get Trump ass out there, but you know, probably something I need to do. You know, I never I never voted. I always looked like looked, felt like my vote wouldn't matter, you know. But, well, although your single vote doesn't matter, you telling your your fans to vote. Yeah, my influence. Th that does matter. Yeah. One Instagram post could change an election. Like, there were some elections in Florida that really could have been changed with an Instagram vote, with an Instagram post. Yeah. Like, it was that close in certain places. So, if you don't want to vote yourself, at least get, you know, put something against Trump. When right, it's time, right, it's right. Time for that. That's we'll, what I do as well. We'll do. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. Uh, let, me, let me show you something real quick. This is a, a new model that's in uh, Sports, Sports Illustrated. What do you think of her right here? Nice. Yeah. You digging that? Nice. Right. This right here is Valentina Sampio, who is the first transgender Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> you dirty as fuck. <laughs> you dirty as fuck. <laughs> she would have got me. <laughs> <laughs> she really got me. She looks like a woman, man. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like she looks like an attractive woman. I, I, I'll she say that on like camera. A, she looked like a few chicks I didn't, you know, dated. Uh oh. <laughs> she looked like a few chicks I didn't date. Beautiful chick. Hope the lights were on. Uh yeah, man. So that's the first transgender model in uh in sw swimsuit uh sports illustrated swimsuit issue. Uh, I can tell you I'm not really digging that. You know, as a man, since I was a little kid, I would get the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue and I would put up the little things on my, my You know locker. what they doing to the world with this shit, Vlad. You already know. We ain't finna go there. <laughs> we ain't even finna go there, Vlad, with this shit. You already know what they doing to the world with all this. You might, you know, next 30 years, you might see a transgender on the quarter. You know, might be on a dollar bill. You never know, bro. It, you know, it, it, it's taking over the world slowly but surely. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just the way it is. It's just a new world. It's just a new world. You know, they have bathrooms. You know, uh, 
it's, it's just a new world, man. And uh, you know, man, listen, I'm I'm all for it. If you feel like you're a woman inside of a man's body, and you want to go and do what you want to do, I'm I'm fine with it. If you want to do gay marriage, that that's cool. Uh, if you want to be gay, male or female, that's cool, man. I fully support it, 100. percent But to to put up a transgender in a heterosexual male magazine like that that's got such a long history i don't know man i'm not digging it i'm not digging it and if if y'all want to try to cancel me over that shit then that's cool but i'm still gonna say what i'm gonna say well might be why this world so fucked up god probably not digging god's probably not god's probably not digging it you know (laughs) gotta think you know gotta think bro like this world has a god he's mad yeah you know yeah, especially he don't like when you fuck with his children. Hmm. You can do anything else, but he don't like when you fuck with his children. When you put something on his children, he becomes angry. When you fuck with his children's minds, he becomes angry. So, you know, God might be mad. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had these I conversations before. I believe in a before. traditional household. You know, and I, I was thinking about this. Like, I don't believe in listen. all that stuff. Now, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not against anybody won't do what they do. They do. I'm just not with it. You know, I'm, I'm not with it. Well, well I, just, I just thought about it the other day, when you have a male and a female relationship, it just complements each other so well. Yeah. You know, when you have a a man and a woman who really are moving towards the same direction together, Yeah. Yeah. it's not like two guys. Right. You know what I mean? Like I have close male friends, but it's not the same level of closeness it's not and, and goals and right. so forth because it's come from the upbringing it's adam yeah. and eve not adam and steve <laughs> it comes from the upbringing that's why it doesn't feel right you know it's that's why it doesn't feel right not against it but that's why it doesn't feel right to us and please plus people who had certain upbringing it doesn't it doesn't feel right you know it's, it's not goals yeah you know it's not life goals you know when you see kids that are raised when they have the mother and the father around, it's a difference. It's a difference. It's a difference. It's 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 a difference. Yeah, you know, you know, it's how you raise a child most of the time. You know, because you know, most of these kids, you know, if they if they see their daddy acting like a woman or acting like a bitch, you know, if they see their daddy doing bitch shit, you know, the apple's not gonna fall too far from the tree. Mm-hmm. You know, my sons like women. Yeah. Dad like women. You know, so so if my son is 12, 11 years old and they touch a girl butt, but, you know, or do some shit, hey, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. You know, if 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 if, if your dad's looking like a bitch, like, come on, man. We gotta, you know, if you looking like this, your son will come out most of the time looking like this. If not, you have to you have to scorn him to be, you know, how we was raised. You know, most most strippers, most strippers, daughter strippers. You know, most hustlers, sons, hustlers. Most hoes, daughters, hoes. Yeah. Are not hoes because they learn from their mama not to be a hoe. It's just, that's just how shit is. How was your relationship with your dad? Oh, my, me and my when dad he, When was he was straight. alive. Yeah, me and my dad was straight. Yeah? Yeah, but now I see what my dad was talking about. You know, like, when, like back then, I used to blame my dad for certain shit that I didn't understand until I got grown. You know, and, and you don't understand that till you get a grown man. It's certain shit you don't say in front of a little, a little boy and his daddy. Mm. You know? Puss ass nigga, you bitch. You don't call a man that in front of his daddy. I bought with a bat at your ass too. Mm. You know? These my boys who, you, if, if you getting it, I, I always took mama's side. You know? Then when you revive the arguments, that was disrespect. You ain't have to do that. Mm-hmm. You don't know till you grown. You don't, you be blinded, bro. You're in all your kids' lives. In fact, you you actually fight to be in your kids' lives. Right, I'm I going remember, through it right now. Right, you said fuck Father's Day. Yeah, I said fuck Father's Day. Suck my ass, bitch. How many of your kids did you have on Father's Day? Two. Out no, of three. Three. Three out of? Eight. Three out of eight. So five kids, their moms were, were beefing with you at the time. And bro, for Mother's Day, my kids was bit with me, right? This is why I was so mad because I sent all them kids down there for Mother's Day. They made a big deal about it. I made sure all them kids got down there for Mother's Day. 
You know, and when it's time for Father's Day, already was supposed to send them back because it's my time with them. It's the summer. You know, they still had never came back. It's my time with them, you know, and still never sent them back for Mother's, I mean, for Father's Day. So I was just like, you know, like, I even get mad at my kids sometimes, man, because I be like, you know, tell mama, stop. Why y'all can't talk up? Sometimes, man, I be like, man, tell mama, stop. Why you just can't say mama, fucking stop. You know, but I just really learned over the years that a dad is not going to get the same love as a mother, even if he give more conciliation, anything than that mother. It's something about a mother. Mm. It's something about a, a dad would never receive the same love as a mother. Even when both. I don't, I don't give a fuck if both parents are head up. In the house. They, in the house and everything. They would never get that same love. I don't know why it's like that. I don't know why it's like that. It's just something about a mother's gift. I think because they came out the pussy. I don't you know. know. I don't know. It's just something about them. I think we were scorned. They were scorned from stories about other fathers. Hmm. You know, we were scorned. We've been scorned by other deadbeat ass fathers. So most fathers aren't shit before they even become a father. You know, so the baby mother thinking already my father ain't shit. You know, from all those other scorned baby mothers who've been dealt with sick, dumb ass baby daddies. So we would never be loved like a like like a mother. Never, no dad. I don't give a fuck. I th I think the relationship with the dad gets stronger later on, as you get older. Like as I got older, I I got closer to my dad, and I got less close to my mom. But you know, you also got to put it. A lot of dudes, because they don't get along with the baby mom, they just abandon the kids. You see that all the time. Yeah, you see that, and what you and, and you see and you and, and you know what you see all the time is kids. His father's not abandoning their kids. They just don't want see them with their kids. That's what you see double as much as you see that. You know, when a woman is unhappy, she will tear that child away from you mm -hmm. for no reason, for not liking a bitch you fuck, for not for for total un, un, any any kind of reason. A woman will do that having the control over that child, Vlad. You can't always say it's that nigga who get frustrated and say, fuck it. No, 100%. Once a woman has a child, she has something on you. Yes. That will never go away. Yes. Power. Y'all could be boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife for 20 years. Power. So and, most, and most people heart not, not like mine. Most people heart say, fuck you. Okay, find another daddy for it. You know, find another daddy for it. That's how a lot of you end up deadbeat daddies. You know what I'm saying? And it's part of mom's fault. Because mom didn't try to, you know, consult. She she always pushed dad away. Yeah. You know. Well, hope things work out with your uh, other kids' moms. Because at the end of the day, the kids are the ones who lose more than anybody else. Yeah, you lose and their moms lose. But the kids really lose. So that's too bad, man. Cause is it didn't one of your uh, kids' moms try to take you to court for no reason, bro? Like, Cause you've been paying her. I never missed a payment. I never missed a payment since I've been home. I never missed a payment. You know, my daughter goes home with a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred. She works for me. You know, she goes home with fifteen hundred, two thousand every time she goes. I've never missed a payment. I actually called and asked her why. Why have you done it? Get what she told me. Because you was late one month. I got tired of calling. Hmm. One month. She said I was late one month. I was probably in Korea somewhere. And I, I was probably somewhere hustling. And I missed one day. And I and I paid it the next. She said I was late. After how many years? After I've been home six years. No, no, I'm saying how old is the child? The child is 12. So 12, 12, 12 years you've been making payments and you missed one month. And yeah, I missed. I was late one day. Not one, one month. One I didn't day. miss a month, Vlad. A day. I missed a day. And that was, I, I asked her, why you, what, what was the reason? You know, bro, I, hey, bro, hey, bro, I, I, I take care of that little girl. I take care of all my kids, Vlad. For her to do that, I don't know. I like, I, I, I don't know. You're married. You know, how, how should the man look at that in the house? How should the man feel? I, you know, if I was that man, I'd say, man, take that boy off there. She, you know, he, come on now. How should the man feel in the household? With three, and he got three other stepkids. 
You got three other kids. It sounds like somebody want me to take care of other people, Vlad. Mm. Oh, she's married? Yes. Oh. You're married. He has two, three kids. You have two other, three other kids. You know, how should the man feel? My wife is trying to get some money out of, and me and him had a, a, a straight relationship. Oh, so you and her husband are cool. We straight. We go to donuts for dads. <laughs> he sit right here. I sit right here. Uh. With his daughter, they go to school together. Uh. So how did you feel? I don't get it, bro. This has got a bigger motive to this, man. Yeah, and I she ain't even that type of girl. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck going on. Yeah, I know. Uh, Somebody plotting on me. They plotting <laughs> on me. Glad everybody trying to fucking plot on me. Uh, Earthquake, the comedian. He's a, he's a regular on my show now. And uh, I, I remember... Before our first interview, his ex-wife did this, this interview and said, Earthquake stopped paying his child support and me and his son are homeless and he just don't care about his kids and so forth. He said, oh, so I brought it up during our interview. He said, oh, let me tell you about that situation. When I first got on child support, being an entertainer, I understand that my money may not always be constant, right? It, it could go up and down if I don't get gigs or whatever else. So what I started doing was he started overpaying his child support every month in anticipation of him potentially missing some payments later on. Now, since he was successful, he never missed his payments. So by the time that child turned 16, he was done. And in the interview, you talked about how, you know, your ex-wife had, had done an interview on Comedy Hype, talking about how you left her and, and your son homeless and you stopped paying money and so forth. And you explained in our interview how you've been overpaying all these years. So by the time he hit like 16 or something, you had already paid all the child support that you were required to pay. And the number of men that hit me about this, that absolutely love this story, was on an unprecedented level on Vlad TV. People absolutely love the story because men are always painted so badly when it comes to the whole deadbeat dad doesn't pay child support that type of thing uh did your ex-wife actually contact you after that interview yeah i mean i mean she um she um we she called me a couple of times so we we're good she um people don't understand um and men got to understand this. My son, he, matter of fact, he's just turned 18, so I'm done. <laughs> and um, it was a hell of a, it was, it was a ride. But the best thing out that, you know, despite our civil war between me and her, he turned out to be a great fucking kid, man. But she did not manage that money properly. So suddenly, <laughs> she's upset that she's not getting any more child support payments and she's trying to blast him, but he's like, I'm paid. I I'm fully paid up. I don't know, bro. Like, child support is for, bro. It ain't for a person like me, Vlad, bro. My kids barely wear the same clothes, Vlad. Mm. Like my kids ragging, bro. Like is they it, closet look like my shit. Is it because that you give them so much money, like cash and stuff like that? It's not all like registered, so then they could turn around and try to say that you weren't paying. Oh no, no, no! My mama don't play that shit. Oh, oh, your mom. Oh makes yeah, it. I, no, oh. I, I, I ain't slipping, man. Like, okay, <laughs> I got all my receipts. <laughs> so for all five, I got all my receipts. You know, I, okay. I, I haven't missed one payment to not one baby mom. Mm. Never, never. I'm not. I don't play with their money. Yeah. You know, I don't like I don't like this shit being in the thing for my kids. I'm not gonna play with their money. I know they go viral. Yeah. You know, they itching to go people, they reaching to fire my ass up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna play with their money. Right. Cause you the know, way that can't be a reason. The way Earthquake broke it down to me, because we we were talking about this, he goes, Well, he goes, What happens a lot of times is you'll end up being, you'll end up having a baby with a with a woman and so forth. And y'all just be cool and y'all have everything worked out and you're paying for the school and you're giving her cash and so forth. She goes and files, 
but you don't have any receipts for everything you paid. And they're right, like, right, right, right then and there, you owe $30,000. Right. You don't have it? Right. Okay, well, now you're delinquent. We're going to take right. your passport. Right. We're going to put you on papers. Right, right, you, right. You could go to jail for not paying child support, yes. right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This is what happens. Yes. Yeah, the system's messed up. Yeah. For fathers. But, you know, we, got, we have agreements through the lawyers where, you know, they get a couple grand a month and I get my kids on holidays in, in the summer. And uh, even me wanting my kids with me at my home, you know, I, I'm still satisfied with it because, you know, all of them got good mothers. Like they, they you know, they, they don't have just bad mothers, you know. So uh, I, I thought I was in a good place. <laughs> I thought I was in a good place as far as my baby mothers. You know, they getting older, they finna be off. I am finna not be paying, for, you know, so I haven't been arguing with them. I thought I was in a good place, but this was like a a sneak attack, man. <laughs> hope it works out. I hope it works out, man, because cause the kids are going to lose. More yeah, I haven't so. seen my daughter since, you know, then a lawyer like, I don't know if you should see your attorney. See, cause you be on live, and if you're smoking on live, they might try. If somebody says her name, she might try to do something to you in court. And you know, it's just they don't know what they do when they do this stuff. You but you you bring a wedge between um a a, a a a father and a child. Yeah, you don't know what you do. You don't know what you do. That girl can read. She makes straight A's. She's never made a B. Hmm. That's what Four parents, she goes all gifted classes, my daughter. Gifted, everything. She wins all the art programs, everything. She can read good. She has an iPhone. You think she won't read about her dad not taking care of her? Like she sees this. She's 12, 13. You think she wants to hear that? Yeah. When she knows it's not true? Yeah. You know, you you hurt the child, you hurt you, you hurt the family. Well, I remember and the then you got my 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 my, my other kids. Why Lyric ain't up here? Why she ain't up here? Everything on me. <laughs> now they gonna blame me. You know what I'm saying? I get the, you know, they gonna blame me. Well, I remember you did some red carpet interview and uh, they said, do you have any regrets? And you said, well, I wish I had been skeeting all these different women. Right. I wish you just had kids with one woman. Right. Which they used to do back in the day. I mean, how many Jacksons? I, I wish it was like the old days. You know, like the, the Jacksons was what? Seven, eight kids? Man, my grandma, my mama and them had nine. Yeah. My other grandma had eight, you know? Yeah. That's just how it was back then. It's just, you know, that, that comes with life though. But I would do it different if I had, a, I had another chance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, retrospect, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But when you're in the moment and you don't got comments on. Young, and, yeah, you just... I was young, living life, man. You know, smoking, drinking. Yeah, popping pills. Popping pills. You know, you pop pills. You don't want to put a rub on your dick. Right. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So I was young, popping pills. You know, that was just me. I was wilding. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but most of those girls, you know, I was. They wouldn't thoughts like that. They, I was in like, I was in kind of relationships with them. You know, all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> Not all of them. Slow down. <laughs> but I can't say all of them. Some of them. But some of them. Yeah. I was in, you know, like relationships. Well, since last time we talked, George Floyd happened. Yeah. When you saw that video, what'd you think? Uh, I went. Well, I had to call my people. I had to, you know, I was finna go all off board. So I had to get calmed down. You know, I be having to get calmed down for certain stuff because I say stuff and take it too far. And, you know, people getting locked up for all them threats and all that shit. You know, my mama got mad at me because I kept posting. She got mad because I kept posting that they need a police serial killer. I had posted that, so my mama got mad at me and shit. I'm like, I don't kill you. So mama got mad at me for that. But, I've been going through it. See, like I'm traumatized because I've been going through this my whole life. With police? With police. When I was eight years old, my first funeral, they killed our neighborhood hero, Pernell. The police? They jumped on a fucking car and shot him through the window. Hmm. Said he tried to pull off. 
They killed Pernay, our neighborhood. 19-year-old D-boy sent me to my first funeral. Down the street, the first funeral I ever went to. When I was nine years old, bro, stupid gave me a wedgie after I bust they wonder after I, you know, I made the news for that. Yeah, the police. Yeah, they gave me a fucking wedgie at nine years old. Yeah, you, you ended up suing the police. Yeah, yeah, I used to get paid till I was 18 from that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I done been, and it always escalated, you know, I, I, I can't help. And I've been had this hate for the police. Now, everybody is joining along, getting in boosting mode. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Every, I've been saying about what to do to cops. I've been saying it, man. Now, everybody wants to go and get in boosty mode. I thank God for the iPhone. Yeah. The iPhone, we gonna bust your ass. Now. Facts. You can't do it no more like you used to do. Like, you know, they been, they killed Tyrus. They killed one of my partners, Tyrus. I was in prison when they did. Hey, bro, it been going on. It's just right now, bro, it's just out of control because they would never suffer. You know, what you happened to George Floyd, it was not, that was a hanging. When you hang someone, you cut their neck off for a certain amount till their oxygen is all the way gone. At a hanging in the slaves, they let you stay up there one minute and a half after you stop shaking. Oh boy, let his ass down, then you fall. He's let him stay down there for two minutes and something. No response. Eight, eight minutes and 46 yeah, seconds, yeah. right? Yeah, no response. Look, that's what they do when you hang someone. They look. It was a hanging. You know what I'm saying? But they would never get tried for a death penalty. Police would never get tried for the death penalty. If you start giving them motherfuckers the chair, burning their motherfucking eyeballs out, they'll probably slow down. You do it to us. You give, you give, you give us death, death penalties. But you can't give that because they have a certain amount of things, bro. They got a certain amount of rules that you can't contact those police and, and make them suffer the same way as certain people. So that makes them a gang. That makes them a, a gang with their own rules. You know what I'm saying? I actually, I hate the police. I, I actually, you know, I, you know, like I hate the police, you know. I don't even like their kids. Yeah? Yeah, like, you know, they just, I just, you know, when police, you know, uh, you know, I took a picture with a little girl the other day. She was like, my mom's a cop. You're not going to want to take it. I just took it with her. I was just looking like, damn. I feel sorry for you. Like, you know, like, I feel so sorry for you, pretty little girl. I looked at her, I hugged and took a picture with her. You know, like, you got to go home. Just think if you a child and you got, that's why you, you quit the force now. You're going to traumatize your fucking child. Your child coming in right now, looking at you, put on that fucking suit. Like, what is my dad doing? Look at my dad. You know, you should feel kind of fucking irregular putting that on in front of your child after what your brother's brotherhood is doing. You should feel some type of way. You can make that fucking money at Home Depot, sucker ass nigga. Go work at Home Depot. Nigga, go, nigga, nigga, go to Delta, nigga. Get your sky, go to work at Delta, nigga. Go to baggage claim. You that's the same fucking thing you get at the police office. Nigga, well, you ain't making no fucking money. Why I do that well, when people are doing that? Well, well, let me let me go ahead and tell you what really goes on if you think the police don't make any money. Because I actually pulled an article recently. I did a, a post about it, which got a lot of people upset. At one point in New York, they passed a they passed a law that allowed citizens to look up the pensions of police, NYPD. There was an NYPD cop who, at the time he retired, got a yearly pension of $475,000 per year. Half a million dollars per year until he dies for being a cop. What these cops do is really interesting. What they do is they get their salaries, but then they get like unlimited overtime. That's not how they make most of their money. They make most of their money, Vlad, where I'm from. Stealing? Kicking doors and stealing. 
Okay. And selling the dope back to the rats, hmm. you know, for half price. You know, that's how crooked cops, narcotics make their money. They take money off you and they take your drugs. They resell them to their rats on the street for great prices. You know, they're, they're way more illegal. Dirty cops are way more illegal and, and, and vicious than, 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 than regular people. You know, they make they make hella money. Just think if you go in four, five niggas' pockets a day, and you know they getting they 20,000 20, in their pocket. And it's yeah. the, and, and you know, like they do, you just either this or you go to jail. Right, you've had cops steal from you. Yes. How, how much total dollar amount have you gotten stolen? I don't know. Every time they came in my house, they stole from me. A diamond ring, my girl, uh, two of her rings, uh, one time they uh I had like I had a big stack of money in my pocket. I ain't had nothing on me. They took all my money out and threw it on the interstate. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh they didn't cut my back seats up. Uh like I said, kill my ghetto heroes. Uh you know, it's just I just don't like I don't like the police. If you got that job, you know, that's not a good job for you, man. Like, you know, especially if you black, man. How could you sit there and let your Black people get gunned down like that, bro, and and still try to fight for those people, you know? I don't know how to look at you, but you know, you're a cool ass nigga, man, you know? So if one of your kids, male or female, went up to you and said, Daddy, when I graduate high school, I'm gonna become a cop. What you think? Blad, what you think? <laughs> get the fuck out of my face. Yeah, go lay down. You out the high school, you must have went and smoked a fucking blunt. <laughs> this out the high school, you must have got high, motherfucker. Go lay your ass back down and come holler at me tomorrow when you sober. Because you high right now. My kids know they can't be cops. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that, that's how they train. I feel you. Yeah, we just had a big thing uh, in my hood. I had a big old motherfucking gathering in my hood. The cop, uh, Big Head. He's a, he's a cop known big and... In Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? But he mm. never fucked over me. Big man, big head always, he didn't fucked over a lot of people, but he always let me ride, you okay. <laughs> He one of the motherfuckers always let me ride, you know what I'm saying? But uh, he saw my son out there. He called my son, hey, hey, come here, what's your name? My son looking at him. Nothing. Your dad ain't tell you about me? I pulled up two minutes later. Daddy, this old police trying to talk to me, man. You know I ain't talking to no police. Who that is? I went over there. Oh, that's Big Head, sir. You heard me? Big Head say, boy, you got him. Tell him I ain't the, I ain't the, I ain't the enemy. That would be what Big Head said. <laughs> Tell him I ain't the enemy. I ain't the enemy. But that's how they train. There you go. Yeah, they not gonna, if you ask him his name, then my, my boy's name, no, I don't know my name. They're trained not to say nothing when a cop asks them a question until their parents get there. Yeah, that's how kids get caught up. When you, when you see all yeah, these you like- Yeah, you ain't gonna give my son no lollipop. C C Central Park Five? Give him a lollipop. Remember the whole Central Park Five story? They sat there and just agreed with whatever the cops told them to say in order to go home. And next thing you know, all five of them went to prison for the rape of that that white woman in Central Park. None of them did it. The real rapist came forward years later just to say that nothing, had nothing to do with these five kids. But you know, you get arrested for the first time, you don't know what to expect. They're saying, just look, we'll let you go home. We'll drop all the charges, just say you did it. Most kids will be like, all right, I did it. Okay, cool, uh, where, do I, where do I go home? Well, you're not if going you home. you train your son or your people to, you know what I'm saying? A child, you train as a child to respect and love a police and respect him. You're making your child an enemy. You're, you're, you're an enemy to your child's future. Right, police is not your friend. You know, they're not your friend. They're here to do a job. Yeah. You know, if you make your child believe at that age that a police is cool, you are an enemy to your child's future. Soon as your child gets in trouble, he's going to tell on himself. He's going to tell on everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even if they have nothing on him. So, you know... Uh, Everybody raised their kid different, but if you're doing that, you're an enemy to your child's future. If because every everybody everybody gets in trouble, everybody's in done trouble. 
It's just some of us get caught and some of us don't. Well, uh, Robert Fuller, who was found hanging from a tree, they recently uh, ruled that it was a suicide. You heard about the story? I just saw it on what you got on Instagram. Have you ever heard of a black man who committed suicide by hanging himself from a tree? Nah, nigga scared of trees. <laughs> now, nah, if y'all said a, a motherfucking, a motherfucking, a basketball court, <laughs> you heard me? Yeah, a old high school where he left, where his girlfriend left him. Yeah, his old gym where he tore his ACL at. <laughs> but niggas scared of trees, man. <laughs> niggas ain't going to no trees. I, I have niggas never, scared of trees. I've never heard. I've you never know? heard of someone no, hanging themselves. No, because it's a symbol. Yeah. You gotta think reality. Who has been hung in fucking trees? Ku Klux Klan. So who is trying to make that fucking point? Mm -hmm. The fucking white people who hung them in the fucking tree. You just ain't got enough evidence, so the world has to reconstruct it as a suicide before any mo files start. Vlad, you gotta wake up. The world gotta wake up. But Boots ain't stupid. I'm not. I'm not arguing this. Hell, I'm, I'm not. Argu I'm not arguing up. this. Come on now. Like, like who, who's gonna? Ass. We scared of trees, man. Every black suicide you see, what it is? Drugs or a fucking headshot. Right. Cause that's what we have. Guns. It's drugs or a fucking headshot. Every time it's cutting your, it's drugs or a headshot. We don't go in trees. We don't know how to tie knots that good, black. You a motherfucking liar. I've been around a lot of black people. We don't know how to tie knots that good. Nooses. We don't know how to tie nooses. We know how to tie shoes. Mm. Bitch, you did it. <laughs> they just ain't got the <laughs> evidence. What'd you think about the rioting and the looting that happened after George Floyd? Uh, I loved it. I, ain't yeah. I love you. You, know, you know I'm totally with it. Yeah. Vlad, if you ask me anything about the other side, I'm going to say, fuck it. It was worth it. Yeah. They That's how I feel. They burned like down. Like Old Dog felt on that, um, when he saw that, uh, when Old Dog saw when he was, when it went on, he killed that dude. The video? Yeah. You fucked that motherfucker up. Yeah. That's how I felt, man. They burned I thought down, about everything that happened. They burned down the Minneapolis police station. Right. That's what I'm like, all right. Right. That was cool. But if they would have shot him or hurt one of them, it would have been more exciting to me. Yeah. I mean, do you remember the 92 LA riots? Yeah. I was down there. You were in LA? Yeah. During the riots? Yeah. My cousins, my my cousins them stayed in Cali and we went down there. Oh. Yeah. So you participated? Like No, I didn't participate. My dad them did though. My dad and my uncle. Okay. Yeah, we had got baseball jerseys, the Yankees, the Oakland A's. All kind of shit. My dad done went down there and got some shit. Yeah, well, BG Knockout, who's a regular on my show, he, he's a, a Compton Crip. He he was actually part of the riots. Oh, and okay. he he explained it, man. I mean, he broke it down. He said the police just, they were out there for like weeks and the police just didn't even show up. Like As the days went by and the weeks went by, it was really strange because the police stopped coming out. The police didn't come out for like three weeks, Vlad. They just pretty much let us. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. Police were just scared. Yeah, they that's what we much, need. That's what we much need. Ran, we need to put streets. fear in them. You know, like that's what we need, bro. We need to put fear in them. We need to catch cops when they're off work, going in the grocery store and butch them. You know, not you don't have to kill them. Just everybody gang them, beat their ass when they at the stores, walking. You know, getting a lemon, just hit their ass in the head. With, you know, we need you need to. We need a fucking private investigating team on fucking cops to just beat their ass, just punching well, them, the way, fucking the way, them up. Think about it. Think about it, right? Think about how internal affairs works. If a cop does bad, a group of his fellow cops are supposed to investigate him to see if he, if he does bad. That'll be like your homie. That'll be like your homie. <laughs> yeah, your homie. He's telling everything on you. You know you gotta go. <laughs> Internal Affairs needs to be a totally different organization of non-cops. It makes no sense for Internal Affairs to be fellow cops. Because- I'm looking into buying this, this town right now, Vlad, in Georgia. I'm looking into buying, buying this town. I'm finna uh, look into buying this town and we're gonna, I'm gonna try to do a whole black town. We're gonna do everything. Everything black, bro. We're gonna have our own police, our own rules, everything, you know. So I'm going to the bank tomorrow to look into getting my own town, bro.
Like, like a Tulsa, like a Black Wall Street kind of? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking all for it. Get in my own town. Bro. I'll come through. I'll visit. Hell you yeah. Know, I'll be welcome there. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> everyone's everyone's going to know best, me there. <laughs> best food, best everything. I dig it. I love it. I, I mean, Kanye kind of doing something like that in uh, Wyoming. Oh, Kanye? Yeah, he bought like thousands of acres there and he's he's building a whole kind of city there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not Kanye. City. Kanye City, yeah, Yeezy Town. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you live in Atlanta. Yeah. Did you hear about what happened just recently with the, the 14 people shot, two people killed? Yeah. I guess, I guess they were partying in the street. They're, they're, you know, in Oakland, we call it a sideshow where cars are just kind of doing donuts in the street, goes and hits another car, and then all hell break, breaks loose. Yeah. <sighs> Sad situation in your city. You know, when you heard about that, what'd you think? Uh, I can't be out of shit like that. That's what I thought. You know, I ain't going no shit like that nowhere. You know, uh, I might pop in a club. You know, I'll pop in a club, but uh, I ain't going to no side shows and things like that. You know, uh, but I'm used to that. I'm from Baton Rouge. I'm used to violence. Yeah. Like when I hear violence, like. It don't mean that much to me as it mean to others. Because violence in my life been kind of normal my whole life. So I guess I get more entertained when I hear like Chicago, 150 murders, maybe that. But when I hear about two murders and some people shot, that don't really. 14 people shot. 14 people shot? Yeah, that's a lot of people shot. Yeah, one at one time, yeah, yeah, but that ain't a lot of spinning. That's a lot of niggas shooting like this. That ain't a lot of real spinning. That, that ain't a lot of real spinning. That's a lot of niggas shooting in the air. That ain't no gangster. That wouldn't. Well, that ain't that ain't that ain't moving me too much. Yeah, did you hear the uh, Gilly the Kid did a video that pissed a lot of people off. He said, oh, "What Gilly did? Gilly, my boy. What Gilly he did?" He said, uh, "He did a whole rant. He said, all lives matter. My life didn't matter to a black man who shot me.'" He need to shut the fuck up. That's my boy, but he need to shut the fuck up right now. Everybody need to shut the fuck up talking about all lives don't matter. Because they fucking don't right now. Because you ain't getting shot. You ain't getting shot by the police. And you ain't getting shot by the police. So everybody need to stop trying to take the other side. Fuck all lives right now. I ain't talking about all lives. Yeah, your life and your ancestors ain't been through what mine been through. Yeah, fuck all lives right now. That's where I'm at with it. But you know where I'm at with it. Everybody know where I'm at with it. But I'm just saying, like, all lives do not matter right now. No, they don't. BLMs, man, your shit don't matter right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had that argument with a, with a girl I used to talk to on the phone. Well, you know, I think, she, I think when know, people I don't... Her, your life don't matter right now. I'm sorry. Well, well I, think, I think the whole point is, is that white lives have always mattered. No, no one's saying that they don't. It's the fact that black lives haven't been valued by the police. That's right. the whole point of this whole conversation. And, and to say that another black man shot you isn't really talking about the same thing that everyone else is talking about. Uh, they're talking about police shooting people. Yeah. Not, not your peers. Yeah, yeah, that's what people Because lots understand. of white people shoot other white people. Right. Lots of Asians get shot by other Asians in Chinatown. How's right. that? Right, right, right. <laughs> I interviewed China Mac who shot Asian people. <laughs> right, right. They're not talking about Asian lives matter. Yeah, we're talking about what the police are doing to exactly. black lives. That's why the whole you all know, lives it's matter. It's a different, it's is, a, it, 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 yeah. you know, that's why black lives matter. Yeah. No, your fucking life doesn't matter right now. Wait till 2021 and I'll think about your life matter. I just told a girl that. We was arguing. <laughs> like, you know, she's a, you know, she's a, She's a beautiful Vietnamese, you know. She, we was arguing. Oh, you she know, said all I lives feel, matter. Well, I feel people are doing. Everybody, like, no, your fucking life does not matter right now. I told her just like that. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm sorry. What do you think about the Terry Crews uh, comments? What he did. Terry Crews said, uh, "Defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Equality is the truth. Like it or not, we're all in this together." Say it again, what he said? Defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Can you explain this? So he's saying, 
explain it to me without the supremacy. Explain the supremacy. He's with. basically saying that the way things are going now, they're going to try to create black supremacy. Like a black laws and like like basically he's saying that if if this goes on, white people are going to be treated like black people have been historically treated in America. Uh, he must be fucking white. He fuck white girls. No, his wife, white, his wife, wife, wife is. No, his wife. Well, she's light skinned. He fuck white girls. And it sound like he fuck white girls. Oh, he was raised around white people who he, made him famous, and he respect them for Terry making him Cruz famous. Terry Crews has been pandering to white people to keep his jobs. The whole time. Oh, okay, okay. See, I don't know. I don't he, know. He's the one. I told you I'm good with yeah, character. There you go. He a suck. He suck ass. I've never liked Terry Crews. Oh, okay, okay. He one of them. He one of them motherfuckers who suck ass. He a coon ass nigga. He funny, especially he funny as fuck. But I see what you say. He like a coon ass nigga. That's why I asked did he fuck white girls. That's what I got from him saying something like that. He he fuck a lot of white girls. You know. He he's been defending. And he and he and he and he and he and he and he. And he, and he, and he and he supports them from making him rich. Right. He feel like the white man made him successful. Right. He feel like the white man taught him manners and things like that. He's a coon ass nigga. If you know, yeah. If he does that and that's his character, he a coon ass nigga. Right. If they ever do Django part two and Samuel Jackson's not available, Terry Crews. <laughs> Terry Crews will be like, I'll, I'll take that Damn, role. Terry Crews, why you saying something like that, man? And, and he's been doubling down on it. He's been doing interviews defending it. And oh, like man, his dude. his co-stars on like, you know, uh Everybody Hates Chris have been like, yo, you tripping right now. Yeah. And he's bro. still defending it. Yeah, bro. He 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 didn't took some money from a white guy. He probably, he probably didn't took some money. He just I don't know, but it sounds like Ted Cruz, you know, like, yeah, he's a he's a real coon ass nigga. He's a, you know, he need to be on a fucking TV show. Yeah, I mean, my man, uh, Godfrey, he actually went back and forth with him. He said, wrong. Black pride is about our love for our culture because white supremacists have trampled on us for so goddamn long. Of course. Pro-black, though, does not mean anti-white. But pro-white definitely means anti-black. We have proof. It's called footage. Right, bro. Like, I don't see... Ted, yeah, Ted Cruz fuck a lot of white women. They, they control his life. White people is a, real, is a real part of his life. And he, and he, and he salutes them for it. Yeah, because remember on America's Got Talent, when Gabriel Union left the show uh, and said that it was a racist environment, he was he was standing up for America's God. There's no, there's never been any racism in America's God. Yeah, no yeah. such thing. Oh he, yeah, he's been doing all that. He's been doing all oh, that. Oh man, he a all cool that. Ass nigga, man. All that. But that that's the same dude. That's the only male Me Too victim. Remember, he had that that white dude grab his dick, and then and then he uh, you don't y'all don't remember this? Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Remember. The the his agent it was it was a big Hollywood agent said that he grabbed his dick at a at a party in front of his wife, sexually assaulted him. He just he love attention. He love attention I, against I, I his would, own people. I would not have admitted to that publicly. He love attention against his own people. Yeah. That's sad, bro. Ted Cruz said I ain't even know he was doing all this shit. But you know, like this just like you didn't you didn't told me four or five things about Terry Cruz. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Booster telling you you're a coon ass nigga, ho. Cause you done done five, six things. So I'ma call you a coon ass nigga. If a nigga say somebody robbed five, six people, you rob one of them. I think on reality. If somebody say you stole nine bicycles, you got nine charges, you did one of them. So Terry Crews from all this shit, you a coon ass nigga, man, for real, dog. And I thought you was funny on Friday, but you a coon ass nigga. For real, bro. You, I, don't, I don't like that shit when you go against our people. My boy Big Kirby, your size, he'll, he'll, he'll slap the fuck out you, boy. 225 Big Kirby, he'll get in that bitch with you, man. Yeah, I don't like that, bro. I, you know, if you won't do something, I, I don't want to do nothing with you. You'll beat me up. But my boy Big Kirby will get in that bitch with you, dog, for all the pussy shit you doing to black people and fuck over you, man. Yeah. I get a nigga to sneak you, man. You don't do no shit like that. I ain't know that, bro. I might start the fuck Terry Crews move. Yeah, I don't fuck with Terry Crews. Yeah. But I've been not fucking with him. I I've been. Terry Crews responded to me a bunch of times on Twitter. I don't he, he, like knows, that. he knows I don't like him. Bro, I don't like that. You doing shit like that against your own people, bro? You a sucker ass coon, bro.
What do you think about the term Karen? Who? Karen. 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 You ever heard of that? What that is? Karen is when a white woman calls the police on you for doing nothing when you're black. They started calling them Karens. You know, like, like that one woman who uh, called the cop, called the cops on that one dude in Central Park because yeah. over the dog. Do you remember that story? No, he was, he was, he was a bird. really exist though. Like, you know, Karens. Like, yeah. Yeah, they really exist. You know, it just if, happened to us the other day. We was, I was outside the, I was in the, in the truck outside waiting on my boy to come from the room. Window crack, woman see, see me. Get straight on the phone. Really? Straight on the phone. Call, the, call police. the police. On you? Yes. Police came. I had to hit a couple curves. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm like, fuck. Damn, she just played them bitches like, like people, bro. Like people are really racist. Right. Well, that guy. In that south. The guy in that, in she, Central Park was was a, a, a an educated black man who recorded the whole thing, recorded her calling the police on him. She actually got charged. Oh, yeah. With a hate crime. Yeah. And in fact, in San Francisco, there's a new bill called the Karen Act, which stands for Caution Against Racially Exploitive Non-Emergencies, where calling someone, calling the police on someone for racial reasons is going to become a crime. I doubt that. You don't think so? <laughs> nah. It's just a matter what police you call. <laughs> <laughs> you might pull that fucking police a woman call on your ass right now. If that cop pull up, them bitches just like us. If that cop pull up and that fucking woman fine, that woman looking nice, talking about you hit her, or for anything, he was right there and, and look, you know, know what he gonna do? He gonna, he gonna, she gonna rough your fucking ass up for that woman. Yeah, that's what cops do, man. Oh, and a cop will try to holler at that woman herself themselves yeah, afterwards. He'll get yeah, her phone number. That, that's the, I'll yeah, protect you. This is my car. You call me anytime. You're I know women that have had that happen. You know. They, they, they've called the police for, for various, you know, situations. The cop comes. Next thing you know, the cop is trying the to cop fuck. fucking her. I know women they'll call the cops at the house and now they fucking the cop. Now they fucking the cop. You know, I know I, women I know fuck cops like to this. get bench warrants off. You know? Wow. I know men doing it like women fucking cops to get <laughs> bench warrants off. Traffic tickets off, uh. you know. That's just how it is, you know. You you can't say they protect and serve. You can't say that nowhere around. You can't say they protect and serve. Well, you made a video. You were at the mall and you were calling out all the black people standing in line to buy yeah, Gucci. Yeah, you saw the motherfuckers. I saw it. Black ass. Heels. So you don't buy Gucci at all. No, that's it. No. And you probably own a bunch of Gucci in the past. No. I, yes. 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 I don't buy Gucci. Was it? The, I'm the serious about my heritage. My favorite subject was social studies. Hmm. Yeah, I love my black people. Yeah. That's what people got to understand. That's the only subject I loved. I loved hearing about what they went through. That shit, you know, about the leaders and the people who helped us, you know what I'm saying? So I'm 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 I'm, I'm you know, that's just how I am when it comes to certain situations about my black people. Yeah, uh I stopped buying Gucci also. I stop buying it, bro. Like right. you know, I, I didn't throw my Gucci away though. I'm, bro, I'm gonna you keep make it one hundred. Noose, like bro, like that's just what you did. Is wait, like, wait, wait. You know the shit what Gucci did with the uh, Gucci made a noose. The black face shit, the man. Yeah, the black face shit. Yeah, like you don't do that. Bro. Yeah, you don't do that. It's some form of you know fuck y'all in there. It's some form of fuck y'all. Right. From who the designer, the you know it's somebody saying fuck y'all. Right, because this is the first time I've seen you not wearing designer. You always wear designer. Nah, I'm. You usually regular. wear design. I know. I'm just saying. I'm At least regular. in my interviews, you do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm regular. Yeah, I, I like. I, I'm a call. I'm a. I'm a cultural person. Like if you shit on the black people, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with you. Like I'm not gonna fuck. With you. I feel you because I'm a lot of. You know, I'm a part of that black. That black force. No, I mean for for example, like I'll tell you. You know, we're we're a video company, right? So we buy a lot of video equipment, and uh, there is a, a huge store in New York called B and H. I don't know if you heard about it or not, but it's the biggest video store in New York. They take up a, a square block. And we used to always buy our, all our equipment from there. It's actually right down the street from our office. And then we found an article that, you know, and that, and that particular store is run by Hasidic Jews, right? And, and I'm Jewish myself. I mean, I'm, I'm going to explain to you how, how serious I am about this. They actually got sued 
and, and they lost, and they showed that the black people at that company were not treated the same. Like minorities were not treated the same as Hasidic Jews. Right. So I, I just told my staff, point blank period, we're not shopping from there anymore. Yeah. That's it. If y'all find something there, go find it somewhere else. Yeah. I don't care if it costs a few extra dollars. Yeah. That's period. It. That's how I am. That's it. Ask anyone. That's employees. how I am, Vlad. That's how I am, bro. Like when I stick to it, I stick to it, bro. Like, you know, like I don't have to wear it. Yeah. You know, I don't have to wear it. A lot of people don't know don't how I, people don't know how strong African American is, especially when it comes to fashion. If Especially, we leave yeah. some of those brands alone, they would they would die out. Right, they would die. If black people stop wearing Gucci, it's over. It's fucking over in the next five years. It's over. They gonna be like fucking department stores in the in the airport. <laughs> they gonna have Gucci little glasses. If black people stop wearing all that shit, it's over. It's over. And I call. I did that because. You know, I feel inside that Gucci don't give a fuck about black people. And look at y'all stupid black motherfuckers. So that's why I did it. Hey, stupid black motherfuckers. That's how I did it. Because that's how I feel. A lot of people don't feel they're stupid. A lot of people feel that people can do what they want. But that's boosty. People asking, why you went off on the Gucci store? People like, because that's me. I feel you're stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> because they made the black shit about us. That's why I feel that way. Well, listen. It, it if you think about buying Gucci, go buy Burberry instead. I think it's a better brand. Anyways, it's more durable. It looks better. It'll last longer. Fuck Gucci. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't fucking with it. Well, you know, there's a new study that actually claims that money can buy you happiness. happiness. It can. Yeah, I agree. You can. Yeah. I'm way happier with money. I'm way happier. With way happier. Way happier. Not only does do I think it buys you happiness, but it shields you against unhappiness. It shields you against unhappiness. Right. When, when my days, sometimes I just, I need a fucking shopping spree. Well, I just need a fucking, I just need a fucking, I need this, you know, I just need a fucking shopping spree to make me feel inside that they can't do what the fuck I do. You know what I'm saying? So right. money does, it, it heals, it heals pain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Retail so, therapy. Retail therapy. Like you, you can't do, you can't do, you can't do this. Like, I just got pissed the fuck off of the baby mama shit. You know, y'all won't fuck with me. I went just got, I just went got a Rolls truck, a new lamb truck, a 2020 Maybach, 2020 lamb, 2020 cooler can, four brand new old schools. Now I'm finna make you motherfuckers hate me. You know, you pissed me off. <laughs> hey, now money gonna make me shit on you. <laughs> right, because how are you gonna be happy? I'm mad, I'm mad now. How, how are you gonna be happy? How do you maintain a level of happiness when you know you can't pay your rent next month? Explain that to me. How are you going to be happy when you know that that rent is due and you can't pay it? Money makes haters. You know, money makes haters. When I was 15, 16, when, when first when I didn't get money, you have hatred ways. You go to the club itching to shoot at people. You go to the club itching to start some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas with money trying to stay clean and fuck at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So broke niggas makes the haters. It's like they go together. You know what I'm saying? It always start from the nigga who down. Always remember that. Yeah. It always, the one nigga gonna be up and one nigga gonna be down. That's just how it is. It don't start with both of them in the middle. I interviewed Willie D recently, right? And, and I'm gonna tell you, Willie D is one of the wisest people I've, I've ever met, period. And he, he told me something that really, that really messed me up. He said, you know, the problem with people is that they rarely work out situations to the very end. We all know guys that say, yeah, we're all gonna go to the club and if someone disrespects us, we're gonna beat their ass, right? But you rarely hear this. Look, we're gonna go to the club and if someone disrespects us, we're gonna beat their ass. Now doing that is probably gonna get me killed. So uh, you could have the money that's in my closet and uh, my sister could have the car and tell my mom uh, that I put a little bit of insurance money on the side. Because most people plan out what they're gonna do to somebody, but they rarely work out what that person's gonna do once that starts to happen. If people who go to the club, before they went to the club and they had a chip on their shoulder, because there, there are people that go out with their, bo with their boys and it, they're tough. They, they go out and they, in their minds, they're going to kick some ass. Anybody get out of line, we're going to whoop some ass. I don't know why they're thinking about whooping people and fighting and stuff instead of like, like trying to snatch up a girl. But 
there are dudes that go out there with that mentality like if somebody get out of line, we're going to click on them, we're going to whoop them. But they don't think about what the other person might do. They only think about what they're going to do. If they thought about what the other person would possibly do to them, before they went out, they say something along these lines. I right, look here, little Ray. Uh, we finna go out to the club, man. You know, we're gonna be our usual selves. You know, we're gonna do a little drinking or whatever. Anybody get out of line, we're gonna ride on there, we're gonna whoop them up, you know, we're gonna handle our business. And uh tonight I'm gonna get killed though. This time I'm gonna get killed. So uh what I want you to do is I want you to have my my Nike collection. You can have all my Jordans. Uh you let your sister have a car because she got to go to school. You know, I don't want her catching the bus. Tell mom I got some money in the attic and uh, and, 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 and tell everybody I love them, man. And, uh, you know, I'm going to make one stop before I go out there because I got to go over here to my girl house and I'm going to kiss my baby and kiss my, kiss my woman and let them know I love them. And then I'm going to go over here and get killed. Oh, and I'll uh, bury, this is the suit I want you to bury me in. Uh, man, uh, to tell them don't be putting too much makeup on me and shit, man, because, you know, I don't like all that, man, you know. Uh, tell that mortuary man, you let them know, man. You know, you know, like you would really plan it all the way out, but they don't plan on what other people could possibly do to them. They only think about what they're gonna do to somebody else. And that and that really got me thinking that most people, when you look at prisons, they're really there because of an impulsive decision, a spur of the moment situation. They didn't plan it out. Yeah. How many people did you know in prison that were there because of something they planned out? A few. A few. How many were there because of something just happened, spur of the moment? A lot. Yeah. Do you feel like now that you get, you get older, that you, be, you become less impulsive? Do you plan stuff out better? Yeah, of course. I've been a criminal a long time. So... You know, I, I've learned from all my mistakes in my life. The problem with people is, is people not taking other people's sex and using it as they gain. That's the problem with people in the world. You know, you're supposed to look at the next, the next man gain and take it as self-motivation. People not doing that. People not have, that's what's wrong with the world. They're not taking up the successful people and looking at them and using it as self-gain. They're using it as self-hate. And that's basically why the world fucked up, I think. Yeah. And he also said that if you look at death row, most dudes on death row are little dudes. Oh, yeah. Most of them niggas on death row be puss. Them niggas be scared to get caught with cigarettes in they cell. Bitch, you done stabbed up nine people. Yeah. I used to get into it with them bitches back there. Really? Yeah. Because right, you were on death row. Yeah, I used to get into it with them Can bitches. You, well, how do you interact with other inmates in death row? Because you guys can't all be in the same yard together. No, we together. just talk through the walls. Through talk the through walls. the cell. So you just argue with them? Yeah, we all got some. You, I come out, I come out, he come out. You know, I used to, bro, I, I was, you know, I was I was having shit fights with him and everything. Shit fights? Yeah. You throw shit at him? Yeah. How, how do you throw shit at someone in a different cell? Uh, You come out on the hall. When you come out on the hall, you throw shit in they cell. In front of the guards? Nah, the guards ain't going to be on the hall. Oh, okay. Guards only walk every 30 minutes. You just shit them down, tell me, hey, put me back in my cell. You going back in your cell. Was death row the worst place you've ever been in? Uh, I don't know, state pen all fucked up mm. regardless. But, uh, actually, death row, death row was kind of, it was kind of sweet, bro. Like. It's just being where you at, you know. It, it had better living quarters, you know. In the state, we we had a new death row facility, so we had big ass cells. Like we had great living quarters. Like wouldn't hide in that motherfucker like the lockdowns and all that shit be. So uh, it's just you in there with motherfuckers who talking a lot of negative. I ain't like the negative talk. Well, was anyone actually executed while you were on there? Nah. Okay. Nah. Do you believe in the death penalty? Yeah. Yeah? 
Yeah, I believe in the death penalty. I do too. I believe in that motherfucker. It's certain shit you do that you need to be fried. Your eyes need to pop out your motherfucking head. And I don't believe in that shit. Yeah, that's that weak shit. You could have slit your wrist. I don't believe in that shit. You want <laughs> electricity, electric chair. <laughs> bitch, eyeball popping out, shitting on yourself. Yeah, bitch, you kill one of my bitches. Bitch, you get electrocuted, shit on yourself. Right. Bitch, all your eyes pop, all your hair pop off from under your own. Right, because I- Bitch, I, you kill a child and fuck her. I, I a three-year-old and fuck her. I interviewed Bakari Sellers, who was friends with one of the victims in that South Carolina church that Dylan Roof shot up. Yeah. Remember that whole thing? Yeah. And they he took was the friends. Get, and, they, and they took that bitch to get Burger King. Let's yeah. go back to the racist shit. Yeah. You, 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 are, you do a massacre and you ask him if he home. Yeah. If that was the turnaround, if there was a black boy killed all them white people, they would have murdered him on sight. On sight. I agree. He would have been murdered on sight. They asked him, did he want to go to Burger King, man? Please fuck over Dial and Luke in jail. Please fuck over him. Break his fucking jaw, bro. Like black people, them niggas in jail, if he came on that line where we would, nigga would have broke his fucking jaw. Nigga would have wired that boy ass up. Ain't no way he living nowhere. You kill nine people, then you go eat Burger King and celebrate. Bro, that cop should be arrested. Yeah, not, not that only. That cop who took him should be arrested. It show you what go down in these southern states, bro. Not only do you kill nine people, but you kill a bunch of church people that were praying bro, you with you. You kill church people, bro. You know, you're evil, bro. You're you know, evil. they supposed to kill him. He supposed to die in jail like Jeffrey Dahmer. He supposed to get fucked up his ass with a broomstick all the way to his throat so that was and Jeffrey die. Dahmer, yeah. Yeah. Any black person who was sitting on side of him holding a conversation, death on you too, man. Yeah. Yeah, fuck Dylan Roof, man. Straight up. That white boy supposed to be castrated in that motherfucker. He right. supposed to be murdered viciously. I agree. I agree. Did you uh did you see my interview with Crunchy Black? Nah. Nah? Crunchy Black, my nigga. That's a fool that. What's interesting is that a lot of people were comparing him to you. Crunchy Black? Yeah. They're saying that's an older version of Boost. Man, Crunchy Black ain't fuck with But me. but the, the the funniest, the, the best part about the Crunchy Black interview. Is that he he mispronounced my name the entire time? What he said? You're doing it again. Glad you're doing, doing it. Again. it. Oh, doing Glad it again. TV. Right. Yeah, just look, look at whatever you're looking at, Glad. I don't know, Glad. It was a lot of wild things. I know we burnt up somebody's car. It's an inside story with all that shit. I can't talk about that, Glad, because I really get in trouble. See, motherfucker can't just be selfish, Glad, because you know I was robbing and stealing out there, Glad. I was, you know. <laughs> Take Why you ain't stop him, Glad? You know what I'm talking about? It was funnier I'm to let him keep doing it. On what can I do, Glad? You know, I don't even write my raps, uh, Glad. I just go in there and tell the <laughs> truth. Well, it wasn't about the money with me. Like, like Glad, look at me. I don't uh, cut corners, Glad. If I beat a nigga up for you, Glad, come on, man. You can't, you can't look out for me? Yeah, I got shot, but I got shot, Glad. She had me in the prison, Glad. I just want going, Glad. No mom, God, no dad. Damn, he was a lot of foul me. shit going on. It's like when they be you know saying boozy. Could've My fucking name ain't got no Z. Niggas went right, but uh, Yo, I boozy. wasn't going, Glad. No, I, I, I was a little slicker than that, Glad. <laughs> I was a little slicker than that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's me, Glad. I wasn't going, Glad. Come on, Glad. Because, you know, sometimes, Glad, I just feel like I, it's a lot of shit that I can say, but I just don't say it. <laughs> the the first streets is the I street, Glad. Look at Boosie. The streets is the streets, Glad. Look at Boosie. <laughs> that does remind you of you a little bit. A little bit. Uh, a little tiny bit. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Y'all can be cousins, time. baby. <laughs> <laughs> you look like one of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had him on live afterwards. He said, yeah, no, you... You told me your, your your real name. You know, you corrected me in the beginning, but I just forgot, and I just kept doing it, and I just let him run with it. Cr Crunchy was great, man. Crunchy, Crunchy was great. I hope to have him back. Three Six Mafia is such a legendary group, too. Yeah, they they big in uh in Baton Rouge. Yeah, uh, you know they big down south. You know they big down south. Well, you're supposed to have a show coming up. Yeah. In Atlanta. Yeah. 
Didn't didn't uh, Keisha Bottoms, you know, the mayor, shut everything down? She tested positive herself for coronavirus. Yeah. And she's putting everything back to phase one again. Yeah. So how are you going to do a show? Uh, I'm waiting to hear from uh, from uh, the people involved. Uh, I'm, you know, I, they didn't pay me, so uh, you know, they didn't pay me half the money, so I don't really know the situation. You, know, I can't say nothing bad about Keisha. Yeah, know, no, I mean, she's a great uh, mayor. Yeah, 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 and I'm in her city, and I, and yeah. I need love. Yeah. So I'm not saying nothing about no, no politics no, I'm not, in that line. I'm not, I'm not trying to paint her in a negative light. Oh, I line. thought you was trying no, to paint her. No, 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 not at all. No, 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 not at all. No, I, I like her. I, I like her as a mayor. I like her as a mayor. Um, you know, I, I might even be living in Atlanta at one point. So yeah, <laughs> I got to <laughs> She calls shots. She, she calls shots. I'm, I'm, I'm a visitor. Is this is this the first concert that you're gonna do since the quarantine? Uh, nah, I did one. Uh, I had one last week at Chit Chat. In Atlanta, it was lit. I'm How many it was people? So lit. Uh, probably two thousand. Two thousand people. About two in a small club. Mm. Probably was Corona everywhere. I don't give a fuck. I got that twenty five thousand. <laughs> she. Then I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm dropping. I'm doing. I'm dropping my price, Blake. Twenty five thousand now. Y- yes. What do you usually get? Can you fifty. Say? Okay. They don't have the fifty thousand dollar clubs. Yeah. Those who. You people who getting 50, so you got to work. You got to drop your shit. You got to work with whatever. And the first thing going to be open is the strip club. And I'm going to be at every one of them motherfuckers. Have you had anyone around you catch it? Yeah, my uh, my friend caught it. A couple of my friends. Okay. Are they okay? Yeah, they straight. They just had the quarantine. Or were they like sick sick? I think I had it. You think you have it? You're not sure. Yeah, like, but like in January when it... Cause I, cause I, cause this was the first time Vlad, I went to the doctor. I had stopped smoking. Mm-hmm. I had to get an asthma pump. I never. They said it was an upper respiratory infection. Mm-hmm. This was February, and um, and bro, I was just bro, but I shook back. They gave me medicine. I went to the doctor. They just said I had a from traveling so much. They think I had a infection. But yeah. it was the first when I saw people with those asthma pumps. I'm like, I already had it. Well. I mean, I know a lot of people who've had it now. I mean, Deal Hughley got it. Uh, I mean, uh, some other people I know got it. You know, Scarface had it real bad. Yeah. You know, he he ended up, uh, he's on dialysis right now. Damn. Like. He got diabetes bad too. Yeah. yeah he, he's had a lot of health issues over the years. Yeah. Uh, I hope he pulls through. I, I love Scarface. Uh, but I I knew Fred the Godson who died from it. Oh yeah, you know about him? Yeah, I, I saw that on the uh, thing, bro. Yeah, I mean, I've I've interviewed him before. We we have pictures together, like, but he was really obese. Yeah, it seems that the people who die are usually obesity seems to be a thing. Right, obesity they can't breathe, bro. Yeah, and let and me tell D, you, uh, that DJ died. He was big, obese, like. Bro. Oh right, 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 right. What, what, yeah, what was his bro, name? In New Orleans. Yeah, the New Orleans DJ. Yeah, the DJ, bro. I don't yeah. know what it is, bro, but. I just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just, we gotta be careful, you know, uh, but I ain't lying, I'm I'm wild. DJ Black and Miles. Yeah. I, I had to put his name out there, yeah. you know, out of respect. Yeah. Yeah, man, rest in peace, uh, DJ Black and Miles. Well, you know, I, I was talking about this with someone today, and it seemed like Trump and pretty much all the states have just done a, a horrible job of protecting the people. Because now, <laughs> now cases are going back up, so really, what it comes down to is we all just got to stay healthy. So if we do catch it, we could pull through. I think that's really that's, all it I is. think that's what it that's is. That's it. Too. You just got to be ready for it and try to... I don't think... Hey, bro, like this this year right here is going out in the history, bro. Yeah, well, you said This that- motherfucking 2020, our grandkid is going to be doing projects about 2020. Facts. Well, you actually said, fuck you to God. Yeah. I've been going through it, Vlad. Over 2020. Yeah. My little sister, she OD. Wait, wait, what happened? My little sister, she OD. She okay? No, she did. Your your biological sister. Not my biological sister, my hood sister, the oh. girl who come up under me. Oh, man. You know, she died, OD. My first cousin OD two weeks ago. <sighs> My first cousin OD two weeks ago. People taking drugs more 
You know, we talked about this last time. You said you said the trap houses are, are bumping right now. People are getting high to try to get away from reality right now. I've been taking a lot of losses, a lot of death in my family. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm and sorry. And then he, that. you know, it's crazy because he's taking the good people, like you know, people who don't hurt nobody and shit. You know, so I'm getting back. I'm getting back. I'm getting back though. You know, I've been, I've been praying more. You know, before I go to sleep and shit. You know. Your mom's really religious though, right? Yeah, my mom. So so when you start saying fuck God, how's that phone call afterwards? <laughs> Did you get cussed out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think since our last interview, uh uh Nicki Minaj did that song with Takashi. And yeah. that shit went number one. Uh, yeah. YG said he's never gonna work with uh, Nicki Minaj again. Would you ever do a song with Nicki Minaj after after all this? Uh, when it happened, you know, I was I was wishing I could have called Nicki and asked her why she did it because you know I, I met Nicki with me, but I've never been around her to know her personality. Mm -hmm. But from all her music, being a fan, I thought she was a ghetto gutter bitch. You know, I always took that from Nicki Minaj. I didn't always, I never looked at Nicki Minaj like the, 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 the pop star. You know, I looked at Nicki Minaj like the ghetto bitch, you know, with the power, with everything in. But I'd never met her also. So, you know, uh, I felt like I was, I felt like when, when I looked at it, I was like, First of all, you don't even know this girl. This girl actually might not have a heart. You know, she might not have a heart for what this guy done did to people. I was like, damn, she might not be what I'm thinking. That's how I was thinking because, you know, if he did this to me and got me a million years, she still would she still do a track with him? You know, I was like, damn, you know, I was I was even trying to take up for her in my heart. <laughs> I was like, that had to be a career move. You know, but I haven't met her to not know if it was a career move. She might not be that street bitch I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was like, you know, did she, did she do that for a career move? Well, yeah. So, and so and, 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 and if she did, that shows of a lack a of your move. character. Because you's a paid bitch. You don't need this for a career move. Listen, I, you I know. agree. I agree. I, and I actually, when I did my, my No Jumper uh, interview with Adam 22, I just said that I don't think Nikki really has a, a moral compass. Uh, you know, Nikki was the same person that was defending her brother who was molesting a, a, a little girl for years. I don't care if that's my family. If you're a child molester, fuck you. Fuck you, die. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I hope you get raped by dogs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. I don't care if that's. My mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my best friend. You are molesting a little, a little girl, man. Like someone who's defenseless, right? For years, and and you're writing letters to the judge talking about he's a good person and using your celebrity to try to get your brother off. Her her husband is a registered sex offender. I don't want to go that far. I don't. But I I I, I want. I won't go to say is, is like you don't have to go that far, but it is what it is. Her yeah. own husband is a registered sex offender. He has to go. He can't travel. He has to go and, and fill out forms when he moves into a new neighborhood and go tell the neighbors that you right. know. Right, Vlad. I hope you know in the streets, every sex offender didn't do it. A lot of those young girls be lying, and you know. But as far as what she did with six nine, it had, you know, like six nine is a sex offender. Damn, he you is. didn't know this. And this Damn, is what I'm saying. I ain't know that. Six, six nine, nine was fucking churn too. Six nine. Y'all know about this. What he did? Hold on. So, God. Six, six, Damn, nine, I be sleep. Six nine had a music video where there was a 13 year old girl who was being raped, essentially, in the video. And he was like, basically, she was on his lap at one point. He was like making sex motions while she's doing shit. And he put that video out. And and he he got locked, he got, he got uh he took a plea deal over that. She was 13, he was like 18. Yeah, I was disappointed in Nikki, bro. I was like, you know, uh I thought I I thought I, I thought I thought from her music, I 
she was a she had a better character than that, you know. Even even if she did that for for uh for a career standpoint or a career boost, it still shows a lack of character. Yeah. It shows that you would change for money and success, you know, and that's just that's how I look at it, but you know, she's already that, rich, man. She's worth she, hundreds she, of millions she didn't of dollars. Have to do that. She, she don't have to do another song for the rest of her as, life. Like, she's rich as fuck. Like she's know. rich, successful, beautiful. I just felt that was a. I feel she shitted on the on the on the on the ghetto community. All the African American people who live by. She know what I'm talking about. I just feel like she. She kind of said she said fuck her. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. And you know, this dude comes out, and we we did the math. He gave out over 70 over seventy something years to the people he testified against with two more people that are facing life sentences that haven't been uh, convicted, you know, right. haven't been sentenced yet. Right. 70 something years. And how it's just not the, it, see, just you affect families. Yeah. So those kids, those kids, like, you know, like, I thought she would look at things like that. Like this guy, this guy done done destruction. I thought she would look at, and, and you give him, what he needs, you, you do. Know, a, you do a music video with him. You give him what he needs, you know, like that was. You a gave bad... him his number, his only number one song, bro. Like, and you do that, like you shit it on, you shit it on your, you shit it on your heritage, bro. Yeah, you, you shit it on your heritage. You really did, Nikki. Like, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I, I'm not feeling it at all. And I, I was disappointed. And you know, I've interviewed Nikki before earlier in her career. Uh, I like some of her songs. I think she's dope as a rapper. Oh, but, she cold, man. She but, cold but, but that her, her, her character and yeah. her morality. That, 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 not, that, 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 not just... feeling it. Not feeling it. And I've yeah. said it publicly before. I'll say it again. It is what it is. Yeah. Kodak Black actually apologized to Nipsey Hussle over the Lauren London remarks. I mean, Nipsey, of course, is gone, but he yeah. apologized to the family of Nipsey over the Lauren uh, right. r- remarks, which I think was very mature. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to do that, bro. Yeah. He was supposed to do that. And you know Kodak. You were supposed to sign him at one yeah, point. You tried yeah. to sign him. Yeah. But he was already on his way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got songs together. Yeah. Uh, seems like he's still wilding out though in prison. A part, you know. Uh, I don't know, dog. I don't know. Uh, Do you ever reach out to him? Nah, nah. Like we ain't never, we ain't never been homies. Mm. I just went up there on some business trying to get a nigga a pack to sign him. We were never homies, like you know. Uh, I admired his work, you know. I admired his work and knew he had talent. You know, I didn't charge him for no no song I did with him. I, right. I, you know, that's just on the, on the love. Nobody I do do business with like that. Right, if you... I see niggas coming up, you know, I, I don't do that. I never charge none of them niggas. A young boy, nobody. I never charge nobody. I'm not gonna charge them little niggas. Them little niggas, especially when I see them got talent. You know, cause I'm a, I'm a by me doing that song with them, I'm part of their legacy. Hey, but listen, I feel the same you way. You know what I'm saying? What, That's what? how I look at it. Why I charge this nigga? He's a fucking growing superstar. Right. I want to get on your song, nigga. Right. That's I'm how part I, of your legacy, nigga. That's how I look at interviews. I got at least 10 people a day that want to buy Vlad TV interviews. And I tell all of them no. I've gotten offered $20,000 to do an interview. I've always turned it down. Every person that I sit down with is because I feel like this person's destined for greatness and I want to be part of that. Right. I want to capture their story and I want to be part of, of, their, of their history. And that's why whoever you see sitting down, you may, not, you may not know who that person is at that moment, but you're going to know about them later on. Right. I never charge anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's what you're talking about. Right. Being being part of someone's greatest. Cause did, you, did you see that one post that showed how many plaques NBA Young Boy had? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Like yeah. about like thirty or forty plaques. Yeah, yeah. How many plaques you got at your house? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I ain't got no like that. I ain't got it like that. <laughs> well, I mean, he's part of that new streaming wave. Yeah. You know. You know what I'm saying? Where he's dropping. I mean, he was like the king of YouTube for a minute. Yeah, niggas ain't fucking with YB, you know. A lot of people. Don't you guys have a mixtape together? Yeah, yeah. What, what's trying going, to get it out. What's, what's going on? Uh, I can't what, what, really come explain on. right now. Lucy, what's what's going we just, on? We just trying to figure out, figure it out, work out the numbers and shit. I'm, Do you have to go through the label and everything? Yeah, he gotta go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Remember, he offered. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta just get Mike Karen. I gotta get everybody to sign off. Oh, he's in Atlantic. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I got to, I can't. I can't go through him to get the project out. Yeah. No, I, I got to go through Atlantic. Yeah. Right. Because he offered to give Atlantic like four free albums. They would give him his masters and they said no. But I mean, but that's the deal that he signed. Uh, you, right. can't, you can't really get mad at that. Right. Nah, you can't get mad at that. Because do you own the masters of your early songs? Nah. Yeah. Hell no. I own, I own that shit. Why you think I don't promote it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't own that shit. You ain't. You ain't out here seeing me talking about fucking wipe me down, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Nigga, I don't own none of this shit. You know, I own all my shit now since I'm independent. You know, uh, and, and 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 it's helped me out in a lot of ways. You know, uh, I clear my own shit, bro. Like I ain't gotta go through all this shit, and I was just happy. I, I mean, I'm in a position now where I gotta, I got a steady fan base, and I'm independent. And well, you know, I get money. You know. I mean, is the money way better selling less copies when you own everything or way better when you're selling a lot of copies, but the label's involved? Uh, because, cause, you know, j to be fair- it, it depends on if you want fame or not. Right. It's all about fame and money. Yeah. You know, with the labels, if you want fame, you go there. If you want money, you go to the indies. But you have to go to the labels first to get to that spot. You can't go indie and you ain't done shit. And you don't have a cult following. You yeah. gotta go to that label to get that boost. You know, it's just up to you not to sign that fucking 10 albums, 12 albums, you know. Uh, but you gotta, I, I I encourage people to go to labels and get that boost, you know, because after that, what do you need them for? Yeah. What do you need them for after that? Well, if you wanna get radio play, you gotta go to a major label. Right. No, that's you're coming not, out your money. Yeah, that's a, you're, you're paying for all that. That's two hundred fifty thousand. That's <laughs> right there, right you there. You know, you you never have checks that really come to you. No, you never have. You know, all your checks are gonna be wrote from the label. You never have checks that come to you. You know, it's different when I drop an album on Distro Kid. You know, I get mm -hmm. everything all to me. I watch it, like I watch it. So wipe me I down. I watch it calculate like this. So so wipe me all down day. isn't bringing checks anymore. Nah, bro, I got a little ringtone. You know when the ringtone money was doing all that shit? But nah, man, hell nah. To the motherfuckers who own the masters, <laughs> Turk and Mel, <laughs> not me. Can you yeah. buy them back? If they get in this situation, I probably could, but it wasn't my song from the dump. I just really strong on that motherfucker. Because well, whose song was that? It was Fox's song. Fox, you were featured on it. Yeah, but I was the hottest out of the group at the time. Yeah. And the CEO came to me with that song, bro. That wasn't even my song. Boots to get on this song. I got on this song. We're going to put your baby, you know. And I'm he with the gorilla shit. I'm with the gorilla shit. You know, he a gang. I'm a, yeah, nigga, come on. Yeah, you but, know, so. Yeah, but when you do a show, you do that song every time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And whoever owns the master, well, whoever owns the publishing and the masters are getting a check for that. Yeah. Because people don't realize that when you perform a song live at a concert, Someone's getting paid for that. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy the way it works. Well, Boosie, what's next? What's next? Um, New projects? Yeah, working to get my film out. Uh, working to get my film out. I just dropped an in-house project, me and Jit the Beast, one of my Memphis producers. Uh, I got the Go Talk 3 coming. Uh, I just did my uh, sports age, my sports. Yeah, I saw you've been signing people. Yeah, I got my marketing and sports. So syndicate marketing and sports, that's been good. I just signed three people in the last week. Uh, what else I got going? Uh, my noodles doing real good. Okay. Uh, what else I got going? Uh, I got my OnlyFans page finna drop in three you days. You got OnlyFans? Yeah. You're not, you're not getting naked, are you? Nah, nah, okay. nah. Thank nah. God. I'm doing what I do on live. <laughs> All right. But I'm just <laughs> fresh sitting on the bed. <laughs> okay. Smoking the blunt. Just making eating sure, pussy. Man. Eating pussy wait, fucking eat, behind wait, wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. I'm eat, telling, eat the cake anime. Wait, you, you eat Bitch, pussy. eat the cake. Oh, you have other girls eat pussy. Yeah, they eating pussy, okay. uh, showering. You're not eating pussy. I'm coaching. Y You're coaching. Yeah. They call me Boo Hefner. <laughs> you, 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 Vlad, you gonna sign on $49.99. Yeah, $49.99. I'm working with 50, you. 50 bucks a month. $49.99. Pussy. <laughs> I'm talking about, about beautiful. I'm talking about beautiful women. Okay. Beautiful women. Hey, bro, my only fans, you never seen nothing like this. So it's basically what Instagram are, isn't letting you do. Isn't letting me do. Right. I'm coaching. 
They got one, one girl, she catching a nut. I grab a fucking leg, Vlad. I say, don't you fucking run. Nobody, when you subscribe to my shit, this is what you get. Okay. This ain't that pussy ass only fan shit showing water going down your nipple. <laughs> I turn, I logged on this whole shit. This bitch got a, a banana right here. And I done paid for this shit. <laughs> you will not be let down at Boosie Bad Ass Only Fans. Only it's called fans. Boosie Baddies. You will not be let B down. Boosie Baddies. Boosie's Baddies. I love it. I love the name. Oh, man. It's, it, it, bro. And they're nice. They're nice, bro. They're nice looking, tongue kissing, mm. sucking pearl tongues, all that. licking assholes. It's great. It's great. Great footage. Red camera. Red not all camera. that. You saw they fucking OnlyFans. Cheap ass fucking phone. Android. Can't even see the fucking ass. I got the fucking red camera, man. The the big red camera. Yeah. Two inches from the tongue touching the pussy, man. Fuck with me. Forty nine ninety nine. Straight <laughs> Boosie up. Boosie baddies. Boosie's baddies, man. Well, uh, before I let you go, there is one thing that uh, I gotta talk about. Five people have been arrested for the murder of Pop Smoke. Yeah. Did you ever meet? Did you ever meet Pop Smoke? Nah, I never got to meet. But we talked on the phone a couple of times. I mentioned yeah. this before. We were actually supposed to do an interview two days before he got killed. Same kind of thing happened with G Money as well. Yeah, we, we had an interview scheduled with him, and then he got killed. Five guys have been arrested for his murder. Two of them are minors, and apparently, they didn't know him at all. Because everyone figured, oh, it's an inside job. It was one of his enemies. It was, it was uh, some bloods he was beefing with because he's a crip, or you know, it was had to do with that Rolls Royce that he stole, but it had nothing to do with any of that. From what the police are saying, and you, you take it with a grain of salt, of course, but from what the investigators are saying, is that he went on live on IG Live and flashed his address, and there was a group of jack boys. In LA, in the area, in the area, that went there and got him. These same guys are also uh, being charged for another murder that happened in LA at the Rose Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they were some little hitter. Yeah. Oh damn. These these dudes mobbed up, went to his house, tried to rob him, and ended up killing him. Bunch of guys he didn't even know. Didn't he shoot one of them? That's what PMB Rock said, but I've I've never heard anything like that. All the early reports probably would have. I mean, he didn't yeah. kill he didn't kill one of them. Right, right. I'll, I'll put it that because they would report on two dead bodies, right? Right. I don't know if he shot one of them. Maybe he did shoot. I, I don't know. The story's going to start coming out slowly, but uh, man, it's just it just shows the danger of of stunting on social media. Yeah. Where people know where you are, you got all this jewelry on, you're not at your house, you're at right. some Airbnb, right. you know? Right. And I don't think they're going to be trying to roll up to, to Boosie's crib in Atlanta. Nah, that's why I be live. <laughs> <laughs> you coming this month. I, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a nice little army yeah, up, in that, yeah. <laughs> up in there. Yeah, we got, we got, we got not, my people at the I'm gate. I'm not too worried to about out. that. But like, if you notice, it's dangerous, bro. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous, bro. That's why you got to protect yourself, especially in Cali. I was saying that Cali is so yeah. dangerous, bro. This shit got me want to go put, get more guns on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cali dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Man. Cali dangerous. Five, five people. Two of them were minors. That means that they were 17 or younger. Oh, that ain't nothing, man. That ain't nothing. I see you like you, 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 uh, you're not used to killers being 17. <laughs> I mean, that's the age, that Vlad. That no, you I all mean, the way, you 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 progress that 17. No, I mean, listen, man. One of, one of my best friends, he killed someone with his bare hands at 17. I I know people like this, but I'm just saying that that was a different situation. That was a fight that broke out that just kept kept going. Right. I I don't know too many people that are gonna go assassinate someone at 17. I do. Yeah, so you know guys like this growing up. Yeah. Shit, my co defendant killed nine people. Fuck. He got convicted of that? And, and, and admitted to it. 
wait, 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 wait. He was no. 15. Okay, wait, wait. So the murder charges that you beat. Yeah. You had a co-defendant. Yeah. And he was found guilty. You were found innocent. Yeah. Over the same case. Yeah. Did he take the stand at all? He took the he took the stand on me. Again, for me though. For for your on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and, and he, he he got me indicted, but he, when it time for court, he took. What do you mean he got you indicted? Explain. He got me indicted. He said you did it. Yeah. And then he changed his mind. Yeah. When he when it was time for trial, he got on the stand and and told the truth. When when he told on you initially, what did you think? This was your close friend. Yeah, this was my son. This was my. I was his guardian on his at his fucking at school. Wow. I signed for him. How old was he at the time of the trial? At the time of the trial, he was like six, maybe about 17, 18. He was still a minor during that trial? Yeah, because oh. years hadn't went by. When he got arrested, he was 15. Oh, so he was just a young shooter. Nine people, he admitted to that? Yeah. Wow. That's why he in jail. They never had not one witness on him, on none of those murders. Because he killed everyone at the scene, pretty much? No, he just never had a witness. He, huh. Nobody was like, they never had a witness on now one of his murders. Not one of them, not one witness. Okay, so you're you're going through this, was, was it a double murder that you were on uh, on this no, this trial for? No, this uh this is single murder. Okay, you, you were on you were on, on trial for a single murder. Yeah. And he was your co-defendant. Yeah. For that same single murder. Yeah. But he had eight other murders yeah. thrown in. Yeah, at, and three for, attempts. For different for different cases. Yeah. And he took the stand and said, Boosie didn't do anything. Yeah, we rap. If he had take taken the stand and said, Boosie did everything I did, then you would be in prison right now. I don't think so. No? I don't think so. I I don't I don't think the jury would have took him. It was it was just all everywhere, you know. It was it wasn't a strong case at all. Uh, you know, he really he just did what he did because he had gotten a situation on another body with my with my with our best friend. And he was just trying to get me off the streets so I would never come back because he knew if I would have came back after what happened with my best friend. Mm. So uh, he got up then. So know. did he get convicted of the murder that you got off for? Yeah. Plus eight other ones. No, they they uh they uh they uh they ain't take him to trial for all the other eight because he got a life sentence and he couldn't get the death penalty because he was a minor. A minor. So they he just got life on. Oh, okay. So they're like, okay, just admit to all these other eight and it's not gonna matter since you're still doing life and we'll just wrap up this whole case. Yeah. Nine people. So so this guy, this guy's a serial killer pretty much. Would you consider him that? I don't know if he killed nobody. Oh, but he admitted to it. I don't know. Just is what it is. Just is what it is. Do you still talk to him? No, nah, I don't be talking to him. Did you feel better when he took the stand on your behalf? Uh, of course. <laughs> I knew he was going to take the stand uh, probably two months after I got in jail. I knew okay. he was, he was going to testify for me. He had already wrote me letters and shit saying, you know, why he did it. He was fucked up. He's sorry. Mm -hmm. He would never catch the stand on me, you know. I already knew I was coming home whenever I went to trial three months into my sentence. You know, he sent me letters and apologized for it and told me why he did it. And, um, you know, so I knew what was going on, what he was going to do on the stand from day one. It's just the prosecutors did it. Well, now it's a crazy story. I feel like your stories get crazier every time. Well, I mean, rest in peace, rest in peace, Pop Smoke, man. Like he was, he was the new sound in New York. Yeah. If you listen to hard. all these, all these new Brooklyn rappers, like the Five Year Foreigns and uh, the Sleepy Hollows and uh, the Twenty Two Gs and all that, like if you look at the production, the beats that they use, it's really what, what Pop Smoke popularized. That like real heavy, you know, like the drum patterns yeah. and that that bass line that comes in, like Pop Smoke really put that on there. 
and he was he was going places. He was on his way, man. Yeah, like I he remember. was. He was going places. Yo, I talked to him. I remember it was a really. I think I saw him at the awards, bro. Like I was taking a picture, and I think I saw him at the awards. We we had on the same Louis because he had on the Louis Vuitton shit like I had on. But I ain't never holler at him. I ain't know who he was then. You know what I'm saying? I just nigga knew nigga was some nigga getting money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had just done. He just showed up on that Travis Scott project. That's on oh, okay. Gotti. So he was, you know, Travis Scott was like the biggest thing in the world. Right. So the fact that you're doing, and that was like the first single off that project. You're doing songs with Travis Scott. Right. Travis Scott need to give me a motherfucking song. I ain't from Houston. Yeah. Yeah, he need to look out for me. Yeah. <laughs> Pop Smoke was out of here and he was 20. Yeah, I ain't know he was that young. When they 20. said 20, I was, was like, 20. damn. You know, he just got the number one album in the country just now. Yeah. Tough album too. Right. Tough album. He was a baby and he was he was about to be out. And that one little mistake, going on Instagram, showing your, your designer shit. Yeah. That, that's at your Airbnb. You're at an Airbnb. God know you're gonna die when you're born though. You can't blame that for it. You know, you, you made a mistake, but God know when your time up, bro. I don't give a fuck. What's good. your that day, you gonna die. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah, bro. yeah. I know babies die. I know kids die. Right. I know old people die. I know I know good people just walk into streets and have heart attacks. When your time up is up, man. You can you know, look at your, it that your way. Your death is gonna bring another situation to other people. You know, some people die for the greatness that they are. Yeah. They, some people are gonna do more in their death than they're gonna do in life. This is true. But and me, me and Willie D had a long conversation about this. Uh, I feel know, like live. some people affect more going to affect more people dead than alive. Well, like George Floyd. Yeah. Like yeah, George yeah. Floyd. George Floyd's GoFundMe page has raised $14.6 million. The biggest GoFundMe ever. He has created generational wealth for his daughter and, and the rest of his family. For real. Not to say that that was a good trade-off. It wasn't. It wasn't. I'm sure his daughter would rather have her daddy back. Right, right. But he created... $14.6 million in wealth. Right. He has created this, the biggest protest in world history. Not, not Minneapolis history, not US history, in world history. There's never been worldwide protests over a single event to the level of George Floyd's murder. Right. He was just a regular working dude. Right. Some people accomplish more in death, bro. Yeah. Tupac, same way. Yeah. When Tupac was here, all you talked about, all, everybody was shit on him. On him. Everybody was a uh, shit on him. Yeah. You know, he ignorant. Everybody talked about him. You know, everybody, every time you heard about him, it was negative. You know, every time you talked about Tupac, it was trouble. Yeah. All his greatness was looked over yeah. until the day he closed his motherfucking eyes. Now everybody loved him. Now he's the yeah, greatest. Everybody's love him. Yeah. yeah. But, but I was going to say. That's just how the world is. Some people are, are declaring more you know, and value more in depth. You could say that your you know your day is your day and there's nothing you could do about it but like me me and Willie D were talking about it there are certain things you could do to speed that day along yes joining a gang yes will probably speed your day along yeah yeah carrying guns yeah will probably speed your day along yeah popping pills right will probably speed your day along right right, right. driving without a seatbelt <laughs> right will probably make that day come a little bit quicker right but you still going out. You might you still, go later. You still that going day. out. You still going out. But look, man, I'm I just turned 47. I got to live 27 more years in Pop Smoke. And yeah. let me tell you, man, these 27 years were great. For real. For real. I, my my last 10 been bro, man, like think bro, about that. You're how old now? 37. Your last look at your last 17 years that you got to live. Look at all the women you've slept with. Look at all the times you spent with your friends. You know, all the people I done made. Look at I done showed a life to. Man, listen. Look at all. Look at how your kids take Boosie out of the equation and think about how your kids grow up. Right. Think about that. Think about it for the last seventeen years. I don't want that. But, but 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 you see what I'm saying? There is there is no income source for these children. Right. They're just in the streets with their moms who are struggling. Like me. Like you. Who wants that as a father? Nobody. Think about all the people you think about all the lives that you affect every day when they listen to a Boosie song, and they say, "Yeah, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to go hustle. I'm going to get off the couch and I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to go get some money. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go do some of my life. Think about all the times you went shopping. <laughs> think about all the jokes you heard. Think about, just think about all the good times, man. Think about how you helped your mother. He didn't get any of that. He was 20 years old. He missed out on all that. He, he never had even, kids. He, he didn't even enjoy his first run, his first rap run. No. He didn't even get to drop. I mean, he dropped some mixtapes, but he never really got to drop an album. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, ain't, ain't nothing, ain't nothing glorious. I mean, it's glorious for everyone else. Yeah, no, it's, oh yeah, yeah, he got a number one album, and you know his family got some yeah. money and all that. Yeah. He's not enjoying any of that, right? He's not there. Yeah, George Floyd neither. George Floyd. George Floyd. She. A lot of I people. hope that happened to me. I hope they get my turn to fucking um go for an account. But yeah, daddy was a real nigga. I hope my I hope nigga do that for my turn. Yeah, they bet not say no damn no. Yeah. Yeah, they better, yeah, go put me a real nigga go farm for my churn. <laughs> hey, they got a lot of them. Fill it up. Yeah, I hope somebody do that for me. Yeah, $15 million. Shit, yeah, my, my churn, they know what to do with it. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit. Somebody gonna look out for my churn for me being a real nigga. Boosie, man, always a pleasure. Always an honor. Uh, glad you're doing well. Glad your family doing well. Um, and uh, I was listening to a new project, by the way. Oh. On the way here, man. Uh, close the papers. Yeah, uh, that was my song. Yeah, go, go listen to that after yeah. listening. Close to this the papers. You know, I always killing them, Vlad. It's yeah, just, yeah. It can't stop me, Vlad. You know, I'm what just it keep is. Keep on working. Till next time. Till next time. Peace.